uh, because I'm at home right now. Oh, it makes sense. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was, uh, I was, uh, I went out this uh, this uh, this morning with a buddy of mine. We went shooting together. He's a cop. I haven't seen him in I haven't seen him in a while. So uh, yeah, uh, this is live, guys. <laughs> oh, nice. Should, we, uh, should we get going our stories and tell everyone? Yeah, doing? I think we should just. Yeah, let's go. Uh... Uh, this is live, guys. <laughs> oh, shit. I got to turn that off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fucking tech geniuses over here. Hey, this is a first for everything. All right. So, yeah. so, so I'm, do I'm doing it, mate. Look, I, I am there. Look, see? <laughs> <laughs> we are live. From I'm, Seth, go on your stories and tell everybody we're on, on my YouTube channel. Live. Live. I'm going to have to leave the, I'm gonna have to leave the, set, the whole thing here. Oh, don't, don't do it then. I'll just do it on mine. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Well, Disorganized. We're exactly. live on YouTube. Sorry, we're All, right, on guys. Channel, All right, guys, we're live on YouTube right now on my YouTube channel. I got uh, Seth and Luke with me. So we're going to take some of the questions live too, if we can figure it out. If this not, we're just so going to. weird, isn't it? We're just going to shoot the shit weird. live. So it's weird. All right, go to my YouTube <laughs> channel. Let's 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 do this shit. Who who would have ever thought we would be this smart? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I think everyone's going to be quite pleasantly surprised by our intelligence. Really, when do I we agree. Get shit's coming through that's what i want to do the diary comments of dog shit is what i want to see okay i gotta figure out how to i want to figure out how to okay the level of professionalism we we have is brilliant okay listen this is the first time for everything all right i got top notch. <laughs> top notch i gotta figure out okay here we go okay i can see the comments now can you guys see the comments or no no, no, no. i can't see i think you have to okay well okay i can see the comments i'll try and read them out as they come on so everybody, everybody seems pretty excited. Anyway, so what's going we on, guys? We're actually getting comments. Yeah, if you go, I think if you go to my YouTube channel, you can see and you click on the. I'm gonna the, do that. There's a there's a. Uh, you can see the icon of the three of us, and then if you click on it, it'll show, on the right hand side, all the comments. Impressive. It's all impressive. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning, Seth. I I like to do do things as I go. I don't. I don't even know if I'm that's the only way to do them. You got to test yeah. the water. That's right. Oh, Seth says uh, greetings from Hungary. Oh, we're live now. There we go. So can you see it? Can you see it, Luke? I can see it. All right. I need, so, so I need to, I, I have to mute this when it comes up. That's right. right. Yeah, mute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay. Right. Anyway. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, I figured it out. This is great. Okay. This what's is going on, Seth? How are you, man? I'm doing well. I was actually curious about asking you. You're up in Canada, and uh, I don't know if the same uh, extravaganza is going on up there as it is here. Uh, they are starting to, like, well, obviously, they've told everybody to kind of self-isolate and, like, you know, don't get into big gatherings. All the all the restaurants have closed. The bars have closed. Like, it's all the same shit. Restaurants. The gyms are closed? Gyms are closed. I got a buddy with okay. a studio, so, like, I get in there to train. But mm -hmm. other than yeah. that, like... The gyms so are closed are, to the are public. The, are, the, uh, are the general public actually listening and not gathering? Are they doing their part or are they just being dicks like they are here? Well, because I'm an introvert and I don't leave my house unless it's to go to the gym or the grocery store, I don't yeah, really you know. You already self isolate. <laughs> yeah, You're yeah I'm like, my yeah, life. I know, you, you probably be able to sit on social media like pictures of people congregating at the fucking mm -hmm. beach. Okay, well, I'll tell you this. I don't, I don't know what's going on like at the bars and shit because I don't go to bars anymore, but. When I drive around the city, it's like, you know, at Christmas time when you drive around, everything's fucking dead because everybody's at home with their families. It's like that. Like everything is just very quiet and there's no traffic and there's no, nobody's working. You know, all the schools are closed. So it's yep. pretty crazy, man. Same here. What, I haven't uh, been to the city. I think the city is, is uh, calmed down, but nothing really going on. It's very similar to that. What? Um, so your, your girls are home from school. Oh yeah. We started homeschooling on. Uh, I think they said the 30th is whenever uh, they got, they're just going to send everything over electronically and we have to homeschool the kids. So did the school set you up with the homeschooling or you guys decided you were going to? No, they're, no, the school set everything up. The kids love, our girls love going to school. They love the social interaction. They're, they're all into it, but we're, uh, you know, Hannah, Hannah went to school to be a teacher. So we're good with mm -hmm. that. She'll do it. But uh, yeah, they're going to send all the information home and we just have to regurgitate it and, follow the rules they haven't sent anything yet so we're going to figure it out so now you're a teacher too uh i'm not doing shit <laughs> <laughs> hey, seth, seth turn your seth turn your phone sideways let me see how it looks 
Yeah, there you go. You Better, a little, little bit more Seth now. All right, cool. So what's going on? I heard, I heard somebody told me that you're, you think this is all crazy and it's not real, or it's what, what's your deal about uh, it? How, how do you say, feel about it? I wouldn't say crazy. I'd say that. Uh, I mean, one plus one doesn't equal two right now, in my opinion. I'm not a fucking tinfoil hat type of person man i'm like is this not the craziest thing to ever happen in in, in world history right now that in our generations it's like man yeah. for a virus that's been like this we've had how many different things kill off everything i mean we've had what was it in the united states we had h1n1 which was a swine flu there were 60 million cases and fucking tens of thousands of people died and we didn't go we didn't do this that i think 10 it's, years ago but isn't the spread of this faster isn't that what they're worried about all right, no, I, I get it. I understand. I'm not I against agree. you. I don't listen. Oh, I don't, no. can, I, can I say something before we start into this conversation? Yeah, yeah. There's one thing that's driving me crazy on the internet is everybody's an expert. I just want to say from the beginning, I don't know shit. I'm oh, just kind of no. trying to piece together little bits here and there. I don't, I don't well, like, a, no, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know anything either. I just know that like, if you just pay attention, it's like, man, I don't remember anything like this ever happening. And even though we've been through a ton of different things, I just look at this and I'm like, ha. Ah, I hate to say it, but I mean, I just, I, nothing makes sense to me right now. Like right now in all the big cities, the National Guard has moved in. It's fine. I heard about me, that. I heard about that. It's so crazy, you mean to right? tell me the National Guard is down in Pittsburgh right now. The National Guard is in California, New York, Baltimore, big cities. We brought in thousands of troops into the cities. Anybody else wondering what the fuck is going on? And what are they? Yeah, I've actually like I've <laughs> considered that a little bit, a little bit scary. But what, what are they doing? They're just trying to make sure everybody stays in their houses. Nothing has been said yet. They moved in on Friday. It is so, a little, it is a little terrifying, eh? I okay. So you so you mean for something that and in the in the in the state of Pennsylvania, there's I'm gonna say there's under a couple hundred cases. In the state of Pennsylvania, there's mm-hmm. under a couple hundred cases, and if this was as uh, as what they they said it is, I'd expect a lot more people to have it. Mm-hmm. And then I'm thinking, okay, so if this many people don't have it, and you're moving in fucking military into the into the cities, I'm at a loss. I don't know. I'm just I'm just I'm trying to piece things together, just like just as if anybody else would. But I'm thinking, I would think that like. <clears throat> you'd go about things in a different manner. That's all. That's why well, I'm saying be... one plus one doesn't equal two to me right now. Uh, do, you, do you feel like the National Guard are there because of the virus? Or do you think the National Guard are there? <laughs> oh, because people are the... <laughs> idiots. That's what it is. It's people are fucking idiots. And it's like, if everyone just listened and stayed calm and paid attention and did, and did their bit, the National Guard I... wouldn't be there to stop people buying too much fucking toilet roll. You know what I mean? It's, 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 <laughs> it's because people are idiots. That's what it is. I... So that's what I mean. Like, is it just is it just a precautionary measure because people are just fucking morons and they're not listening, or, or is is there is there a next step that's going to occur if there is an outbreak and they're expecting a huge outbreak, and then they're going to force people to stay home? Which again, I completely understand as well. I live out in the country. I I go to my warehouse and then I come here. That's all I do. I so think it's the grocery store. Like, I think the excessive force is likely to protect people from themselves, not necessarily. But I think it could be. People, a... are, people have already behaved like fucking, like fucking animals already. Well, that's and that's the next thing is, is, and this hasn't even been. Nothing's been shut down when we are, and already <laughs> people are freaking out. So you imagine what the next stage is going to be riots, and that's what I think. What the but I think that's the point yeah. of them coming in. Yeah. yeah, that's the point of them coming in because if there's an outbreak, and people have to stay home, and they're forced to stay home. I think people are, start to, people are going to start to freak out and have riots and stuff like that. And that's what they're there for. You know, people yeah, should, I think, you know, and I think that's what they're doing. What people should do is just fucking stay home. <laughs> it's, that, <laughs> it's, that, it's that easy. I don't understand what the problem is. It's like, it's like when you're a kid and your mom goes, oh, you've been in trouble going to your bedroom. When I was a kid, they were like, yeah, that's where all my toys are. I'll go there. That's fine. So I don't yeah, understand yeah. why everyone has such a problem just going home. What's the problem? Yeah, but I think, you know, like, for example, like Seth, you're not, are you, I'm still not sure what your position is on it. Are you like, I'm staying home, I'm good, or are you like, this is not really severe, or where are you? Oh no, no, I'm I'm just as much of a fucking introvert as you are. Like, I don't yeah. like going out and doing a lot of shit. I mean, we have our gym, we have our gymnastics facility, we have multiple businesses. We had to shut down the gymnastics, we had to shut down the yeah. the, the nutrition store. Um, we're still shipping products because you know where our 
Our office people do not work any longer. We send everybody home. They have home offices. Um, yeah. The only people are the shipping team, and there's we took it down to three people shipping, and uh, and three people that are shipping. They show up. We ship out what we need to for the day per the orders, per our retailers, per everybody. Yeah. That's it. We're running yeah. very lean uh, on me. I don't know what to think of this whole thing. It just kind of seems odd to me, but um, I expect this to be for a, a duration much longer than I think a lot of us are anticipating simply because you don't bring the military into a city for five days. Yeah. You, nobody does that. And what? I think that the riots, the, the riot control, or if that's what you're going to call or whatever, yeah. Yeah. I'd probably say that. What's the, what's the strangest part of it to you? Like if you had to point to one thing and say, that's a little odd, I don't know what the fuck that means. What would be the strangest thing in, in of it? Is there something you can point? To, is there something you can point to where you're like, that's a that's a strange coincidence, or any type I of? I think it, I think it's a strange. I think it's strange that uh, the the measures that we took, given the fact that I think that many people could have had this. I mm. mean, bro, the, the flu kills a ton of people, and I understand that this spreads quickly. But I just find it very odd that we are doing so much for something that is that is uh that has not done i i mean i get it i just i'm yeah. i'm confused yeah, i'm yeah, just yeah. as confused as anybody else so i'm i'm lost the, um the panic and the and like the reason the panic you think the, the reason why is the social media because when the swine flu in 2009 there was what like fucking myspace it wasn't like <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't like it is now and no. it's like it's everywhere to the point where I think that's causing the majority. It, social media ha, it is responsible for bringing in the National Guard, I think. From all, the, all, the, all the videos of the fighting over toilet paper. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's probably, it's, yeah. There so, are. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Seth. Sorry. No, I was going to say people are going to start losing their shit soon. Yeah. People are going to start losing their shit. And the big thing is, is that's, and that's why the military is probably moving in, is because. If this lasts any, if this lasts any longer than another week or two, and there is continued shortages of toilet paper, or, continue, or then there's a start, there's a shortage in meat or certain products. People are going to lose their I shit. I am just, I think, I don't know how it is there, but here, the all the retailers are saying there are no shortages of anything. Everyone needs to calm the fuck down because supply and demand, supply is fine. Nothing's changed, so it's, it's, there's no reason to be, for people to be freaking out. You know, is it, is, it, is it the same way you are, or is there a supply issue as well? Uh, the only supply issue that, that that's here is the fucking the, the cleaning products, the the soap, the hand sanitizer. What I'm saying is the re but the retailers are telling everyone there's plenty to go around. People just need to stop buying in bulk and taking it all for themselves. No one needs to be doing that because there is plenty. Yeah, there's signs of one per customer up where we go. Yeah, that's where we go. That's where we yeah, go. I got rationed on my steak. I went to the grocery store and I always buy like, you know, six or seven steaks. And I throw them in the freezer. So I walk up to the counter and she's like, you can only buy two. I'm like, well, I'm going to eat these both today. I got to come back tomorrow. Like what the <laughs> fuck? So I had to, I had to put two back. I'm like, it's a little bit nuts. Yeah, have you had any issues grocery uh, shopping yet? Just that, just that, like I haven't had, like I had, they rationed my steak. I don't know about Seth. Yeah, no, we bought a good bit in the beginning, but I go to the, I go to the same butcher all the time. Like whenever I went, I went two days ago and I got, I got the six steaks that I normally get. I get three packs of two. Like I just, I, I was like, are we still, you, I asked, are you still going to get steaks? And he's like, yeah, we're good. He's like, just come back at your normal rate. Keep buying the same thing. He's like, if I see in that we are having an issue, he's like, I'm going to let you know. Mm. That way he, I can order whatever I need to from him. So because you have your own studio at the warehouse, are you, your lifestyle really hasn't changed, I guess, other than the gymnastics center closing. Yeah, no, nothing's really changed. Uh, a lot of people want to come and train. And yeah. uh, I feel indifferent about it sometimes because yeah. it is yeah. just freaking me out with it because it, yeah. it, it is going to it can affect all of us and our families and it can just spread like crazy. So uh, there are, there's a couple of people that we're good friends with that come in. But, you know, I just yeah. tell them, you fucking wipe everything down, dude. Stay yeah. the fuck away from me. Do your thing and then wipe everything down. I'll see you later. Do you ever feel like people are offended that you can't you won't let them train or, or do they understand that it's a safety issue? And both, yeah. both, both. Yeah. It is what it is. I, I mean. I don't know uh, I, if there's also that thing. If I let five people in, I let 10 people in, I let tw 10, 20. And it's, you know. Yeah. But it was never, it was always intended for us to just have for, you know, what we do. Yeah. What, okay. uh, switching gears a little bit, your podcast is on fire. 
Yeah, how everything's was, going well. How's the podcast game going? Your studio keeps getting better and better. It started with like a counter with some whiskey. Now you got like bookshelves. <laughs> yeah, we got the bookshelves. That's our that's our hobby. Our goal is yeah. uh, is to uh, we have we had a ton of people lined up to come on the podcast for April. Oh, okay. uh, we had two people at the end of March to come in, and then more people in April to come in. But with all this shit that broke out, because everybody knows Bob and I now, they know yeah. our personalities and all that. Now we want to start bringing people on, yep. so that whenever we bring people on, we're able to just let loose and make it about that person. That's right. You know, having whenever, whenever, whenever uh, you come into, whenever you come in, whenever Luke comes into into these states, all yeah. these things. It's like, hey, come up for a day. We do these. We have people on. And it's uh, it's supposed to be a show that everybody knows us and those the questions we're going to ask and how fucked up it's going to be yeah. and make it about that individual and everything nice. that they have. Even though you and you and Luke have this podcast and what you guys do yeah. on there, then I get to interview with you and ask you fucked up questions about your life. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so, you know, because so, everybody, cause it's you know, everybody has different perspective and different yeah. thoughts about what somebody does. So right now, the, the two guests you've had. Uh, neither one of them is like a pro bodybuilder or anything. Are you getting, are you doing bodybuilding stuff or are you doing different guests? Everything. Okay. We're going to do everything because uh, uh, one of the big, I wanted to bring Anton was on the list to bring down because okay. Anton is like the king of comebacks. Like yeah. the dude went through a ton of different shit when it came to, uh, you know, his personal life with, with uh, his addictions and everything like that. And I think that goes a lot, goes very far with general public, which we yeah. have a stupid amount of. And then, uh, and then he overcame the bicep tear, which I can't believe that he came back from it like that. Yeah. And um, so he's he's a great figure to have one. And then uh, we had uh, we had Singerman lined up to come in just because Singerman's built one of the most insane businesses in our yeah. industry of all time. Yeah. So and then you same thing like yeah. your bodybuilding career and everything that you've done and how you've got there and every single show you've done and everything you've done and how many injuries you had yeah. like. How do you deal with these th types of things mentally? Yeah. Like, how yeah. do you come back from these things after you've invested all of your life into something and then all of a sudden get snipped away from you? Yeah. Because everybody's mind works differently because you continued and you're still successful. Yeah. So yeah. what do you do that other people don't or how do you deal with it? Um, then another guy we had that's lined up is... Uh, Single Malt Daily. His name's Nate. He uh, Single Malt Daily is his handle on IG. Uh, okay. And he's uh, he's one of the 150 pallets that does blind testing throughout the world on whiskey. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so like, you guys are big whiskey guys. So obviously he fits the bill. Oh uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and we just want to we just want to welcome people from every different genre of life so people get yeah. a taste of everything. What do you think, Luke? Can we welcome anybody else? Or are we just strictly meatheads? Oh, we should. Uh, I, I've well, I actually brought you on to do a podcast that just has the weirdest people on. Like, <laughs> you, like I, would, you, I would love to like interview like a porn star, just like, yeah, like, like, just weird, weird shit. That's that's what I was doing. <laughs> and, 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 and it's also the questions that everyone's thinking, but no one asks because I think interviewers try to be too smart, you know. Because if I had a porn star, I'd be like. How many dicks have you had in you at one time? Uh, that kind of shit. That's what everyone wants to ask. Not like, oh, how much money do you make? I don't care about that. I want to ask, well, how many dicks have you had? Did it hurt? Or did you? And like do it? they all taste the same? Yeah. That's a, exactly. Have you wondered that? <laughs> yeah. I, think, I know Seth. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not something that's interests me, but I mean, I'd like Seth to know. Seth has wondered if they all taste the same or not. Well, that's I gotta know. Do you think it's a matter? Do you think it's a matter of person or a matter of nationality? Like, is a, no, is, I, is a, is a I'm not being. It's, listen, whoa, every whoa. every episode, every episode has a sprinkle of racism in it. Oh, Just, I don't know if he's. <laughs> I think it's. I think Seth asked the question because he smells a bit different, and he's wondering. Well, we're not I talking mean, about smell. We're not talking about smells. We're talking about taste. So. <laughs> Is, I just want I mean, to know. Do you, do you get, what do you think differentiates the, the taste? <laughs> oh, no. Go on. I, 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 I'm desperate to know the answer, mate. You can't get out of this one. There's no backing out of this. I, um, I, I'm, I'm hoping everybody understands that this was just a generalized question for me for the porn star. Yeah, I'm so not curious. 
he's backed out. He's backed out. How disappointing. I think he was curious. <laughs> See, I think he was curious. That's why he brought it. And now he's like, oh, shit. I got to get out of this somehow. I got to back. I got to backpedal. I I the thing, the one back. thing I want to know if I spoke to a porn star is I want to say, do you actually like it? Because whenever you see them on YouTube, they're like, you know, it's not, it's not what it looks like. It's just acting, you know. It's just I feel acting. like they gotta so like no, it. Is that you're getting fucking smashed, and you're yeah. how can you really don't like it? You do that shit at home, and you're getting paid for it. Don't tell me you don't like it for fuck's sake. You think they all like it? I think, yeah, I think they have to. I don't what do you think, think Seth? What do you think, Seth? You think they like? I don't it? think they're just like, well, it's just, it's just the job. But if it was just the job, you'd be doing fucking waitressing at Pizza Hut, not what, this. What do you think? I Seth? agree. I agree. I, I, I mean, it's kind of like with, with us and bodybuilding and all these things, it's like with, 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 you know, being an, being an active competitive bodybuilder, you know, you look at Luke and it's like stuff in your face nonstop. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to get lean. And you're like, you can't actually like this shit. You're like, yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, you think it's that, that's the comparison. So uh, like, sometimes we wake up and we're like, fuck this bodybuilding shit. I'm starving. They just love the stuff. But you still love, you still love <laughs> You guys said it. Walked right into it. So you think they're the same. You think they lay there and they're like, fuck, I hate my life. But at the same no, time. No woman's taking 30 cocks a week and being like, I just do this for the money. Fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. No I don't way. know. I think this is really like uh, from a man's perspective. I think some of them probably don't necessarily. Of course like, there's going to be. There's going to be like some that like, I literally only do. What do you think the percentage of porn stars are that don't like it? I think the novelty wears off quite quickly. Like having a trampoline in your garden, you'll know this, Seth. I've had a trampoline in my garden for my for my kids, and they they loved it for about two days, and then they're like, "Yeah, we're we're done with this." And it's just been sat there for months, right? I think that's what yeah. like. they do it for. A, they they're like, "This is going to be so good." They're about two weeks in, they're loving it, and then and then they get to the stage where they're just sore all the time. And I think the novelty's worn off. They hate it. That's what I think. I I agree. I agree, but I think the percentage is probably going to be. I'll say like 65, 35, they like it more than they hate it. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. I could agree with that. I could agree with that for sure. Pretty even. So that's who you... So go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to say, so that's who you... Luke, if you had your own show, that's who you would have on? I just have really, really weird people. Like, you know, the people that think, oh, I'm going to get my eyeballs tattooed. Well, what the fuck are you doing? Let's go, let, tell me what the fuck you're doing. Because that's not, that's not something that normal people do. But so many people that they do that shit... And I want to just know what the fuck are yeah, you, but you know, I don't, what yeah. I call my podcast. You know, you're one of those people, right? I don't have tattooed eyeballs, mate. Yeah, but you have hoops in your fucking ears, and you you told me That's about a, not the same. Wait a minute, <laughs> Seth. Listen to this, Seth. Seth. Yesterday, he tells me about a story that this he him and his girl were cutting <laughs> during sex. Whoa, 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 whoa! They were they were cutting each other with like yes. paper clip, like little paper cuts and shit to bleed while they're fucking and that was their like <laughs> what are you, you are, and then he's like i want to get taken, weird people i'm like taken. you are yeah well that's probably why i want to speak to these people that's what i'm saying because you're one of them but, mate i'm not quite yeah. actually, the way you've just described it isn't actually the way i described it just, <laughs> <laughs> he's acting like we fucking sit there with paper just paper cut each other like this is so fucking hot okay Give me your fine okay explain me that Okay, fucking Casanova. Explain to me the sexual way, like the enticing no, way was, of cutting no, each other. It was more sexual way. It was more like you asked me what was the weirdest thing I'd ever done. You also asked if I liked it, and I said I didn't really. Yeah. And it was a blood thing, and it was with a little scalpel, make a tiny little cut on you, so you're just bleeding, and it's a lot of blood. And some <laughs> girls like that weird shit. What do you think, Sam? They do. I mean, I, I, I hate to ever criticize anybody's moves in the bedroom because... It gets you off, man. It gets you off. It's, right. it's your thing. Um, but... it's, the same, it's the same one. Like, some people love being pissed on. It's not good. <laughs> it's I've not tried it. I've tried it. And I was it's like, not yeah. the same thing. It's not the same thing. Have you, have you, they, it, mate, it's pretty weird wanting to be pissed on. I don't know. It, uh, uh, yeah, no, I don't. Uh, I don't have a I desire don't... for that. But if there is something that I ever do desire one day in life, I don't want somebody to be like, oh, you're weird as fuck. I kind of just want to do it. And Yeah. Have fun with it. No, then, like you, you've made it sound like you'd like being pissed on. That's that's done. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you mean? I'm saying it's not as weird as being cut. No, of course it's mm. not. Cool. I would rather get I would rather get pissed on than be cut. I think well, that's yeah. an opinion thing there. Come on, Seth. You'd rather okay, fine, Seth. Let's put it to you then. You have a I'm choice. not into the pissing I'm not into the pissing thing. Ain't have you done the have me. you done the have you done the piss thing though? Me? Yeah. yeah. No. Mm -mm. Well you might, you might, you might it. like it. It's it's <laughs> You might like it. You might like it. <laughs> no, 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 
you know what this is always it smells like sugar puffs i like this i think every i think every guy i think every guy is pissed on his girl in the shower at least once oh yeah but everyone does that but we yeah. always do we always do we'll be looking at them and i'll yeah. be like why are you looking at me weird and you'll be like <laughs> And you feel like, like, look down, you're just pissing on them. And it was, uh, you're so horrible. Every time, it's like doing a fart, it's silent. You know, it's everybody awful. has done it. Everyone's Seth, done it. You've, had, you've had to have done that, Seth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. I've definitely done that. I mean, I'll best pee on you just because it's funny, but I'm not being beat on. No, not, not sexually, anyway. They might have done it to you in the shower. Oh, for sure. So, you wouldn't know? How would you not know? Would you how, would you not, how would you not know, Luke? How would you not know if, a girl, know if a girl peed on you in the shower? Well, no, I think you would know. You would know, like it's not a secret. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but I'm saying a guy can get away with it without no, without the girl knowing. I don't think so, mate. Because well, well, why, is, why is the water yellow? No, <laughs> oh, no. that's, uh, that's not what you think it is. It's just this weird lemon shampoo. <laughs> anyway, so you're so you're starting to do guests um, at yeah, the we, end of this month, but now you're putting on pause. So what are you going to do? We're just going to do regular podcasts with Bob and I. Just go through it. Just go through our normal thing and, uh, yeah. and and still keep doing our thing. But the guests, we, I mean, that was part of the show. You know, we want yeah. it to be a show where people can get to just get to know people that they've never seen before. Kind of like Luke just said about having a porn star. Bro, yeah. if there was a porn star that I could bring on, I'd be like, yeah. You want to bring on people from different industries, different different genres, and just see what they think, see how they, why they got into what they are and see how good they are at their craft and what yes. brought them to the point. Obscure, um, Joe Rogan. Well, that's kind of what I was trying to do in the bodybuilding industry is, but I guess you're right. Cause I was trying to do like what I started doing before me and Luke started doing this podcast was uh, the real bodybuilding podcast is just trying to expose who all the guys are. Cause I don't feel like the guys get enough actual time to just talk about who they are and what they're doing and what their life is like. But sure. I guess you're right. It, it might be a, it's an interesting thing to kind of get other people into the mix too. And oh yeah, you want and you want people and and the reason that uh, and it's just it's very similar to this. How you guys have, I mean, we've already talked about porn stars cutting each other, pissing on each other, you name it. It's like I want people to be able to come on to a show and have a no holds barred conversation. Like yeah. you want to say it, I want to ask you. You know, there's a list of questions I had for people that were fucked up and their thing that I've seen them do a couple times or or right. how or whatever that pertains to their life from an intimate level just to start to break into their actual their actual life side because i think so many people like you guys are vulnerable people you've put yourselves yeah. out there um and it's like if you do those things like people can relate more so i want that to yeah. be able to for those people to be able to relate to these others even i mean find a porn star yeah start asking them wild questions all of a sudden somebody's like man i think like that wait what how yeah, do I think yeah. like a porn star? Yeah. Do you think, do you, when you get a guest on, do you study them or do you kind of wing it because you want to, you kind of learn about them on the show or do you learn about them before and then try and get them to open up more when you're, when they're there? So I don't want to talk to the person. I don't talk to them at all. I study them. I yeah. learn about them. I get information yeah. from them. I generate a list, but I don't want to talk to them because then whenever I'm having, because you know, whenever you have a conversation with somebody, yeah. all of a sudden, like a million things could run through your head and you could be like, yeah, I'm going to ask these questions. Yeah, but yeah. if you know, if you already talked to him about a subject, you're not as surprised or impressed or blown away. And like, you might have a question that you've been meaning to ask, but then don't for some yeah. odd reason or anything. So I like to have an idea. Uh, I have a list of things about the person and then them lead, lead me and everyone else leave me where you want to go wherever you want to take me let's yeah. take the whole let's take the whole crew i always felt like if you i mean i before you came on the podcast i would just you know i would just start i'd be like okay ready okay we're gonna start and we wouldn't talk at all beforehand no. because i want it to be as organic as possible you know what i mean i want it to just be a normal conversation but i feel like i should start studying the people a little bit more I think I think just getting a well, maybe looking at their social media or watching their stories and just getting their personality. Yeah. You're right to know who they are when you interview them. You just have them on. You're like, so who are you? Tell me. <laughs> That's kind of what I do. <laughs> Tell me about yourself because I have no idea. <laughs> no, good. I have a, I have an idea, but there's some people I know more than others. Like when I have Seth on, or if I have Evan on, or the first time I had you on, I know you guys a little bit more closely, so it's easier to have a conversation and just let it go wherever it goes. But How sometimes about Evan you, coming back, huh? Yeah, that's I'm gonna excited. Be, but how is he going to be able to come back though? If there's no show, that's the problem. I, I don't. I, I, he just got big again. I'm excited to see him big again. He was fucking 
if I mean, it was hard not to like Evan. So I'm curious yeah. to see what's going to happen. Yeah, he competed. What's his last show? It was 2017. Yeah, it was like three, three or years. four years ago. I mean, yeah. do you think the actual there will be any shows this year, or do you think it's going to be cancelled all the way up? I think we might have shows in June. Yeah. I think the shows that are left are going to be fucking stacked. I was talking about this with Antoine. Oh, oh my god! I, I was up in Toronto. I was up in Toronto yesterday uh, training with the guys and Antoine. Speaking of his bicep tear, you know his bicep looks like nothing happened at all. I know. Like I can't I'm looking at. Remember it. which one's the bad one? Dude, he's po he's posing for us at the end of his workout, and I'm like, I can't tell fucking which one. Like my tricep tear, it's like fucked. My triceps like pulled up. His bicep tear, his arms look exactly the same. Man. His, like, so, but I was talking to those guys yesterday, and you know, he was getting ready for uh, Brazil, I think. Arnold Brazil. Well, that, well, that show is going to be um, supposedly postponed until later in the year. So yeah, but this is what I mean: is that there'll be the same amount of shows, and it'll all just be condensed. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it's okay. It's going to be two things: one, they're going to be stacked, and two, it's going to be a great year to be a pro bodybuilder because you can get ready for one show, and then do like eight in a row. That'd be sick. Because think about it: they're all going to be like in in July and August. And you're just gonna, you can do like knock them all out one after another. Yeah. But Man. they're gonna be like they're gonna be like mini Arnold's though, because everybody's gonna have to qualify, except for like a handful of people that are already qualified. Yep. Every, everyone's gonna have to get on stage. Uh, that's what we want. Yeah. It's gonna be intense. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to see what occurs, just because. I mean, I'd really like to see Sean Roden come back. I'd really like to see all that shit with him pass over or get it over with. So we can see where he stands and then uh, and then just see where Brandon Curry stacks back up this year. Where do you think he's going to be? Who, Brandon? Yeah. Um, after seeing I, the after seeing the Arnold, after I, think seeing Brandon, I think Brandon will win again for two reasons. Yeah. Uh, number one, no one holds the size he does with that conditioning, even though it's not the best. And I think that they really, really like Brandon. Well, he's done well so far. I see him doing a lot of like outreach stuff and talking at high schools and all those he's things. Being so, Mr. Olympia. Yeah, he's, he's doing well. Of, he, he reminds a little bit of Lee Haney. Yeah, he's got yeah. that kind of likable attitude. Family man. He's smart. Yeah. He's very approachable. Bro, he's an, he's he's been outstanding since the day I met him, and every time I see him, he's 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 a good ambassador. He's a quiet guy. He has a but he's a, a genuine as it can be. Yeah. And I mean, I think that if he gets if he can bring his condition in a little bit better each time, I don't see him losing. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of who would beat him right now. I mean, Luke, Luke is going to give a, a, a good uh, – people a good run for their money when he finally gets back on stage. And then we have Sergio coming up, but I feel like Sergio still needs to get a little bit bigger to fill out his frame. Yep. I don't think um, people realize how big Sergio is as a person. No, no, I, I, I know. I saw him in Columbus when I was there. He's, yeah, he's he has like um a very yeah. similar like like Kuklo has a big frame. That's what I'm saying. Like he needs he's more. Not, it's, he's not much short. I think he's about Steve's height, isn't he? He's yeah. Not much you know, it's funny that you make that comparison because when I saw him this year in Columbus, it's the first thing that stuck out to me was he's the same width as Kuklo, and I've never met anybody as wide as Kuklo. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so but then when you see them on stage, you're like, okay, I feel like Sergio still has to put on more muscle to fill that wide frame out you know what i mean to get that really dense look he's that, a big person yeah that like brandon has right because brandon's like when you look at brandon's overall frame it's like he's really filled it in you know what i mean mm -hmm. i feel like i feel like sergio still has some holes that can be filled up you know what i mean so yeah i think that uh i mean i'm i'm a huge fan of luke's physique just simply because not many people look like him there mm -hmm. hasn't been a physique like his that's just it's dense yeah. It's mean, still has a tight waist. Thing, those things are very, very difficult to attain. So I think that um, I, I, uh, I think last year, I think last year was the year for the start, the transition of all of this, of the big like, okay, we're not gonna, we're not gonna look at these ugly physiqued, awkward looking physiques, and that's where you get people like Luke, Sergio, Kuklo. I mean, these are all really great physiques that are gonna start moving up. And yeah. pushing and pushing those top those top the top three spots. How do you because think Dexter's, you would... Dexter's nope. going to disappear now? You know he this will be his last Olympia. So yeah, it won't be. I fucking bet it won't be. But I'm not letting this shit year be my last year. I bet it'll come back next year. You know. <laughs> how do you think? Uh, how do you think you do against Bonac, Luke? Honest, <laughs> honest like assess, honest assessment. Who? 
Must be. You, you, do you think you could stand next to Bonac like, and, and, and have. compete well? No, no, but I mean, can you think you can overtake him at this point? Uh, I don't like talking about myself because it's really cocky and I haven't been on stage for a while. Um, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think I can beat him with more time. I yeah. Don't know if I'm yeah. Quite, yeah. 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 I, I don't agree know if I'm ready yet. Um, yeah. Look, I mean, I, I, the, the holes I have, I'm filling them in. Like, I, I mean, I posted that picture earlier just because that was a post. I was like, oh, well, fuck me. That, I noticed your, your hamstrings look better. Your hamstrings yeah. look wider. Everything looks bigger yeah. like, in the right places, but it's just an illusion. I've just brought up a couple of areas. Yeah. I think to beat someone like Bonac, you have to be insanely complete from every angle. Yeah. Andrew, Bonac is my height and yeah. 250 fucking pounds. For me, for me, to, for me to beat William Bonac, I have to be nothing like William Bonac. Yep. Yeah. I have to be maximum me and nothing yeah. like him. Yeah. And, that's it. and that's why I think, I think that's why people are struggling to beat him because like Brandon Curry is just a better version of Bonac. I don't know what they're at. They're not the no, same. No, they're they're same very, no, no, but they're very comparable. They're, how? They're very, no, how? They're both muscle belly guys. They're both very dense. They're both. Well, they're, they're far more comparable than say me. Next three different. Yeah, he's, he's closer to your. He's closer to Bonac than you they're, are. Yeah, they're, they're, they're much more comparable. Um, and you have all the. I think you have all the guys that are kind of like more Roden, Patrick Moore, Nathan Gash. I think they're more comparable. But I think I don't know where I sit there. Rami doesn't sit anywhere like that. Great grain train, motherfucker. It's just. It's just. <laughs> so to beat these guys, you have to be different. Like Cedric could beat everyone because he's different. Yeah. So you, it's like you can never beat Phil Heath by being a better version of Phil Heath. You have no. to be the best version of something yeah. else to beat him. Yeah. yeah. That's why. That's how Dorian beat all those guys because they like they were all very comparable too. Yeah. The Dorian beat the fuck out of them by being nothing like them. It's funny. You're you're the only one when I think of the lineup. You're kind of the one that stands, and Cedric, I think Cedric, Cedric as well. You're not really comparable to anybody because when I think of Sergio, he compares well with. I would say Cedric and Kuklo. Those three kind of are a grouping because their height and their structures. Yeah, yeah. And then you you take the the Brandon Curry's and the Bone Axe, You put them together. I don't know if there's anybody I put next to you that has a similar physique. Like you're kind of like your own, like a I Mike Francois. That, <clears throat> well, that was thing. that's always been my ambition is to be. I, I want it to be a bit different. I don't know how you can do that. I think it's just genetic. Well, what was the show whenever you stood next to Dexter and almost beat him? Tampa. Tampa. At that show, that was one of your best showings, and everybody there was kind of like, hmm, I think that could have swung the other way, and I would have been okay with it. Yeah, maybe. Let's see here. What would you, what'd you look like in Tampa? Oh, do we have to do this? <laughs> I'm so excited <laughs> right now. Look at, look, at, look, at, look at Fuad's uh, uh, specialization techniques on the IT here. What? <laughs> have you deleted it? Have I deleted what? The shortcut from last time. Oh, the Pornhub shortcut that I got like a million people are like, oh, he watches Pornhub. I'm like, yeah, it's on there, man. I, can't. I don't I don't like this look at this show. I was really like, I just is this know. it here? Was this not the show? Was this a different show that I'm thinking of? Then? No, I was I was I was really I was you really were just excited. a you were just a little flat. You weren't yeah, well, like, look at look at that one day out that most muscular in the hotel room versus on stage. It's not at all the same. This is you right here with Dexter. It's a little shitty. It's kind of a shitty picture, though. I might have been thinking of a other one, though. You were, probably thinking, you were probably thinking of the Arnold's, uh, the Arnold Seth, because at the Arnold's, he looked really good. Yeah, that's you and Dexter. I mean, you compared well with Dexter. I, I, think I, I, would... I, I actually think my, my physique doesn't photograph very well because I don't think I ever see what other people see. <laughs> yeah, but that's, nor that's normal. <laughs> that's, nor that's normal for a bodybuilder. That's just the way we all are, I think. I don't, I've never met a bodybuilder yet that looks at his photos and they're like, oh, I fucking look amazing. I've yeah, never. Yeah, that red double for me looks shit. That's why I spent the whole, that's why I spent the whole, since that show fixing it, which is why I posted the picture today because I think I have kind of fixed it. <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, I that's know. what we're supposed to, that's what you're supposed to do as a bodybuilder. Yeah. You're supposed to do that. Yeah, you're supposed show, to look there and get pissed off and change it. Every show I do, I just look at my pictures and think that that looks shit. Well, now that you're on, I mean, and, and like you made good points because you you're you have to bring you have to bring a completely different physique than everybody else does. That's the only way you're going to break into that uh, that top three spot. Well, that's and start. what we always say: just bring the best that you can be, which I absolutely agree on that. You know, you know what's funny about Dexter? It's like. It's just an inch here and an inch there that separates him from everybody. Look at this. You're a bigger guy, but then if you look, there's like an extra inch of peak on the bicep, 
extra inch of peak on the tricep, extra inch of like sweep on the thigh. It's just this like little, little bits. It's little bits everywhere. You even have them in the stomach. Like your waist looks better here. But I think he, I think Dexter is uh, I think he is an alien. If anybody's wondering, <laughs> um, I'm done believing that it's all steroids or all his food. I think he's an alien. I think he's right there with Mike O'Hearn. It's just I think I think the thing that separates Dexter from us is just Dexter uses more drugs. That's simply it. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. be up the trend. He's been so nope, nope. I don't. For 40 years. I don't think it's drugs. I think he's an alien. That's why I think he's. Yeah, an alien. yeah no, I know. It's the slim. It's the slim. Definitely. It has to be, has to be insulin. That's what uh, my That's favorite thing says. about Dexter is, is whenever he's like, because I follow him on stories and I see everything and, uh, and I'm like, this dude is so, he's so repetitive with everything he does. And that's how you're a successful bodybuilder. Oh, yeah, but whenever he feels like letting loose, he's like, oh, I'm going to let loose. And he has like a Seagram's wine cooler. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to drink half of this. And he's like, I can't handle any more. I'm like, this is great. Yeah. I mean, the guy, the guy is a machine and I bet you, oh. aside, when it comes to drugs, I bet he uses the least out of everyone. And that's why he's looked so fresh and healthy his whole career. He's is it sick. a is it a slap in the face to the rest of the bodybuilding community that a 50-year-old almost won the Arnolds? No. Or is it just show how great Dexter really it shows is? How great I like to think that. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. 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 Because he, I mean, you can't really, like this year at the Arnolds, you can't really tell he's 50. Like he fucking no. looked amazing. Like if you took his, if you just took his head from here down, there's nothing that there's nothing that says he's 50 years old. No, they didn't give him. They didn't hand him second place either. He earned that motherfucker. My, so, a lot of some people thought he was first. My favorite thing about Dexter is how fucked up he looks. Like two days out with his hair like gray and sticking out. <laughs> yeah. and then he and shaves. Then he just looks like just a maniac. And then, he, <laughs> and then he cleans up and he's just like, oh yeah. He looks. <laughs> he amazing. looks fucking. 20 years older yeah. when he has all gray sh yeah. salt and pepper through here yeah. and then cleans it up. It's awesome. It. The best thing about, for me, the thing I love most about Dexter is his stroll out to the center of the stage. He doesn't give a shit. And that's zero fucks. He's like, he just strolls his ass out there. He's taking his time. Oh, and I remember... I remember yeah. back in the day, back in the day, people used to be annoyed by that. I remember when yep. I first started, people were like, what the fuck? Can't this guy get to the center already and just start posing? And now, and now it's become like his trademark and you actually enjoy watching him take his fucking time. Like, you know, you, you, you know it as well as I do for what, whenever Hani would do his impersonation of Dexter. Yeah. Did you ever see it? No, I don't think he's in it for me. You've never seen that? No. Oh man. He did it. I remember he did it at the Pittsburgh. He bust his balls too. Did he? He'd like, what's up Dex? He'd walk out there like Dex. Oh, he did the, the stroll? Pump up with the finger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Honey's got it for everybody. Honey's fucks Honey, with everybody, man. Every single every single person he can he can imitate. That dude knows every person's shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys want to take some of these questions? We've got like 250 questions. Yeah. yeah let's go. Yeah. We'll take a couple. Alive? Are we still alive? Fun, yeah, man. we're still alive. People are people are just commenting to each other, I think. Uh, like, these guys they're talking about they're talking about Flex Lewis in the open. Actually, that's interesting before we go on to the questions. What do you guys think about um what do you guys think about uh, Flex Lewis in the open? How's he going to do this year if there's a show? Phenomenally well. Yeah, I think but people. But brings... people are talking about like Brandon Curry level. Are we? Are we there? Yep. Uh, yep. I, I don't know because I think he's gonna... one of these things you have Sorry. to see them next to each other because Flex is that is incredible, but he might get dwarfed, and you don't know until they stand next to each other. That's the only thing we're waiting for is will he hold up comparatively size wise? I, I don't, I don't think it's going to be, you know, like for example, when Patrick Moore went on stage, people were like, well, he's so much smaller than everybody else, blah, blah, blah. I don't think it's going to be the same situation with Flex Lewis. No, I, I hope it isn't either. I'm not, but I'm not sure. It's just when, when I think he's on an open show before and there was quite a disparity. I competed, I competed against him in the open, like in 2000, yeah. fucking 2009, eight. Uh, I mean, I I beat Flex Lewis. I can put that feather in my cap. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the thing with Flex is, but he was so like twenty pounds lighter then. So it's so hard to say because he doesn't look that big in a t-shirt. But I think it's when he poses is when he comes alive. I don't know if I agree with that, man. I saw his fucking arms, man. In person, I see him. Well, I saw him about a month ago in person. So, um, and you don't think he's big? 
No, he's very big. He's very big, but he's still he like, wears a four XL. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Big, he, in that motherfucker. He's he's big, but I, I mean, but by, by the amount of muscle he has, but his actual frame, like when he's oh he's that yeah, frame, like he has all the muscle there, but he's his actual frame going to make him look. I don't, think, I don't think it will be, but that's the only thing I can think of that's going to hold hold him back is that if he's just like size wise in a human to human. Yeah, but the only reason I disagree with that is because if you look at Bonac, he's got the same small structure. Yes, but, but Bonac's got a lot more muscle. The reason I bring it up is because when he competed against Hardy Chopin, Chopin yeah. Hardy was quite it looked in the pictures quite a lot bigger, right? Yeah, Hardy and almost Hardy, beat him at that show, didn't but, he? But Hardy didn't uh, look bigger than Brandon and. Bonac. I see what you're saying. So that's and, and that's the only yeah. thing I'm saying. And I and I think I think Flex is one of the best bodybuilders on the planet right now. But Flex has also had, had a year of being unleashed. That's what, that's, what, that's what I mean. So I don't I don't know. I don't want to yeah. say if 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 there's no if there's zero issue and he stacks up size wise, he beats everyone. Yes. That's so I'm, that's what that's I'm, and I'm not even saying this is a criticism. I'm just saying I don't actually know because we haven't seen it. And that's most, go- I think that's actually the most exciting thing as well. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, if there's an Olympia this year, Flex will be in the top six, 100%. 100%. 100%. So where are you saying? You're saying not in the top three necessarily. I think I think, I think think it'll be, if, if he's not quite stacked up in terms of the size, and when I mean size, I mean the skeleton size, the actual yeah, size. Yeah. yeah. And not muscularity. I think he, he can win. I think that with if Flex can bring the same level of conditioning that he brings every fucking year with the feathered butt cheeks, and the tightest shit skin. If he brings that at two hundred and twenty-five pounds, yeah, that's a tough fucking physique to beat. That's yeah. tough. And if and it's going to make somebody that is slightly off or missing a little bit at that particular show. If he is on, I hate to say that because everybody says if he's on, but Flex has repeatedly been on. I think yeah. he could break into top three. I I, I say guaranteed top top five. But uh, he could do top three do, just because you, kind of, he you could, get what I'm saying that if he matches everyone in terms of the actual size. Oh, well, yeah, and and it's tough because you saw Hardy Chopin break top three at the Olympia, and I think that if Flex is unleashed and he's actually able to be himself rather than have to damn near kill himself to make two twelve, I think he could be. I think he could bring a package that that could floor people, but he might if he. I mean, we haven't seen it. You know, he might fuck up. He might fuck up when he tries to get too big, or uh, I hate to say that too. That was if my. He screws, if he screws up and distends his belly or widens his waist anymore, he's gonna have a hard fucking time. I think. I think the only reason I say about the size thing is because there has been instances, instances where two twelve guys will go over to open and they just look small. Fuck yeah, like me. It's not, it's not a muscle thing. It's not a muscle thing. It's just the fucking. It's, and they, yeah, yeah, there you go. Like, but Jose's done it, and he's one of the biggest in the two twelve. But when he's up against the open guys, when you go up against like guys like Cedric or Rami or even Sergio and Steve, Flex isn't the tallest guy, and it's it. And when these guys are as wide as he is tall, it's yep. hard to it's hard to stack up against. Them. Why do you think Bonac and Hadi can get in that mix, even though they're small, short guys? The amount of muscle that the frame is just mind blowing. See, I think Flex with an unleashed year of training is going to be that thick. Yeah, that's why. That's why I'm excited. Yeah. To see it. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. That's why I'm saying it's so unknown. Like, when I was think, the last dude we saw a pick with that that with that that dude shirt on? When's the last time we saw a pick? I haven't that's seen right. one in a year. That's right. The only the only my only concern is is it going to be is he going to bring the same crazy Flex Lewis conditioning if he's trying to be is he going to be better with all the muscle like even sharper. Or is he going to lose a little bit of detail? Well, I mean, everyone's. I mean, Neil and himself have always said he's normally ready at about two twenty-five, and they have to peel yeah. off muscle at the end. So yeah, yeah. Well, he could probably if he has another fight. It's a really he could be ready at two thirty, really. Yeah, which would be crazy. That's a big boy. Yeah. It's- All right. Let's uh, let's go through some of these questions. I picked out a couple, uh, and I want to I want to start with this one because it annoyed me. So uh, okay. nice. <laughs> This guy, it's a very, very quick one. This one, this guy asked, thoughts on starting insulin first before starting any other anabolics? Get, get in the fucking bin, what do you mean? <laughs> well, why, you said, why would anybody you, ask why, that? You said any other anabolics as if it's in the same category. I just, we've mentioned repeatedly on the show how much we fucking think insulin sucks. Yeah, and people scary. consist... I love it. Do you really? You know, you ain't fucking around. <laughs> he's like dexter no i just uh i just like i don't i don't understand people's fascination they think the insulin is the fucking the trick 
Well, somebody's yeah. written. Somebody's written in the comments. <laughs> maybe he's diabetic. No, he's no, he's not. Fuck oh, off. then he wouldn't be. He, would, he wouldn't be like, well, I'll just, I'll just try insulin now. Then. Yeah, I mean, it's, I've been diabetic for years, but I'm going to try insulin now. No, he's definitely not. That's a good idea. I kind of like this uh, rolling the rolling questions here on the side. We've never done this before. I haven't. But it's it's distracting because I'm trying to have a conversation, but you want to read the questions too. Um, okay, next question is. I actually think Milos would probably advise people to use gear before insulin. I, I, if, if, I mean, if I'm gonna, if we're just gonna break it down, yes, it, insulin is something that you use when you're a very also, experienced bodybuilder. Just would use it until you're ready. I don't think you take you on as a client until you're yeah. like, experienced to be at that level. Yeah. Um, this guy says, "Sorry for the weird query, but how do you guys deal with protein farts? Is this normal or is it just me?" I think if you get, I don't ever get, I don't get protein farts. I get carb farts. They're horrendous. The protein carb farts. farts. Not, yeah, when you when you start carbon up for a show, you're like. Brr. Well, that's just because your body's taking in a different. You're taking more of something that your body hasn't had. It's like it's my, a different my, thing. Well, no, no, I don't think it's that because even if you're just eating a ton more rice, or even on a high carb day, I'm a bit more. Uh, Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I understand. But I think, I think, but I think if you're getting protein fast from the protein powder, it's probably because you're using a shitty protein. Oil. No, no, not the protein powder. I agree with that, but not the protein powder. If I, if I do six ounces of meat and then bump it to 10 ounces of meat, I'm probably going to fart a lot more. Oh, I don't know. Is anything? No. no. Seth's left. He's like, this is bullshit. Uh, I'm, I'm out here. I'm still here. <laughs> Hold on. Silence. That's iPhone. Um, Tell me what happened. The fuck? How do I get back to it? I'm coming. Uh, so, I mean, it's only live, mate. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll skip this one. So, we don't have protein farts. Is that what we're telling this guy? Not nobody, uh, Seth. No, I, if I eat something that fucks with my belly, if it was really tasty, I'm going to go back to it at one point again. <laughs> but if it wasn't tasty, anything that fucks with my belly, I like throw out the window. I don't want to feel like shit. What I don't want to smell like shit. What food is it that you like that fucks with you, but you eat it anyway? My mom's spaghetti sauce. <laughs> I smell like straight garlic, and it's garlic shit whenever I fart. And it's oh, horrible. it's the worst. It's, it's horrible. horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Like I go, my mom's like, "Oh, we're having spaghetti." I'm like, "I'm so excited, but I'm also gonna feel really bad because it's gonna be just horrible at home." Is it because it's so good that you overeat, or is it just a matter that you've eaten it? Period. Oh, if I if I'm gonna eat a large portion, but yeah. I never eat any more than that. And it, yeah. it'll fuck anything up. Yeah. Right. What's she putting in there? What's, what's in this? It's making you shit your guts out. It's, I, 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 it's uh, probably the garlic. garlic. She puts a stupid amount of garlic in there. And then uh, she uses uh, fresh tomatoes, does all that. And she uses a good bit of oil. And then she uses three different types of meat. Veal, pork, and burger. Dude, that's so good. You're, your mom knows oh. how to do it, man. It's bro, it's made from scratch. She doesn't a huge fucking vat. It's phenomenal. She tries to send sauce home, like here, take some home, and I'm like, no, I'm not taking it home. I don't. Mm -mm. Let me guess. Let me guess. It, let me guess. it takes her. Go ahead, Luke. Sorry. It's such a mum thing to do, isn't it? Or, or grandmothers? Or like, yeah. Oh, bro. It, okay. It's not, just, it's not just a little bit. It's a, it's like a fucking bucket. Like oh, I saved you yeah. some. It's like every time I see my nan, she's made like a fruit cake. And she'll give us a slice. We're like, oh, you can take some home. It's the whole fucking cake. <laughs> what do I, need? I don't need this. You know, you know, someone knows what they're doing. What they use three types of meat in their in their pasta sauce. Yeah, because everyone gives off a little bit different flavor. And I bet you, it takes her like eight hours to make it. Probably right. Mm -hmm. She just lets yep. it sit on the stove and it simmers. Is it oh, one of those big, the big, uh, the big? Oh, sauce massive, yeah. massive. Yeah. It's huge. That's awesome. Huge. I, I yeah. Try, try some. Uh, this guy wants to know if we have any tips on binging, and I thought this was an interesting because I binge like crazy. So I thought we should cover tip binging. On how, tip, tips on how to have a success. It doesn't say it doesn't say whether to have a successful binge or to stop binging. All it says uh, is tips, on, tips binging. on binging. I like to have three different apps open, so like Deliveroo, <laughs> Uber Eats, and Just Eat, and I like to order something different from each. Have you done that? Be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, sometimes I'll order like I'll order pizza from somewhere. Yeah. The sides from somewhere else, and I order the dessert from somewhere else. Yeah. Hundred percent. And I just sit there, just waiting for it. Just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, last week. That's last my week. tip. That's my number so, one tip. So I'd have a cheat night every Saturday since I started back on my diet like a month ago. Last Saturday, I ordered mcdonald's from uber eats and then I ordered a pizza from Skip the Dishes, and it's they so fucking good. got they got there at the same time, and I'm like. 
ah, uh, it's like all my favorites were just sitting oh right in front of me. God. Like, Dude, that's the way you got to do it. And then the next day you go back to the diet. That's how this you is binge. Awesome. This is Why? Awesome. You don't do that, Seth? Well, no, I, I just, I, we don't use Uber Eats or anything. We live out in the country. So like, they're not coming out. Yeah. But I think it's awesome that like you two both do the same exact thing that is relatively fucked up, but it is definitely a meathead <laughs> thing. Definitely meathead 100%. Well, it's, it, to me, it's just common sense because there's that, well, this restaurant has <laughs> the best desserts. This restaurant has the best starters. And this one does the main mains. So obviously I'm going to use all, because I'm going to spend the same amount of money. So I might as well order from three different places. Yeah. What do you do, Seth? On your What do you do, Seth, on your binge? Do you binge uh, or just, do you binge or you just cheat? Let's first clarify that uh so i have an eating disorder i'll we'll put it there first <laughs> okay. um, i don't compete i just like to look a certain way so it's like if i see an opportunity i take yeah. full advantage of it yeah uh and i'm more i guess it is a binge because i go and eat the meal that i wanted and then i eat the things that i wanted but i never like if i eat ice cream i eat a bowl of ice cream i don't overeat on the ice cream uh. i just eat a normal size then i'm like oh look doritos Oh, look, Oreos. Oh, oh okay. look. Uh, I, I don't understand. I, I see I'm one of those people that say, I don't understand. How, you're one of these maniacs that can have a slice of pizza. That's, yeah, yeah. I don't get that either. I can't figure that out. Uh, no, well, I, I can't just know. I just have a, I'll have a, I'll have, I'll have a bite. How like, la, like, like last night, I got a pizza and I got pasta because it was my cheat night. So I'm like, I ordered a medium pizza. And a, and a large order of pasta and a soup and whatever else that came with it. A fucking soup. It came with it. It fucking came with it. Okay, it was a, it was a soup or a salad. So I got soup. So anyway, so the the thing is, I can't just eat. I have to finish the pizza. Oh man. Oh. Like I can't have three slices and then close up the box. No, yeah, you don't. Fine. Nobody else is eating your pizza though. Like I have, a, I have a, like a, a bunch of heathens that'll finish things. <laughs> but that's even so more like, reason. That's even more reason for you to finish it first. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh. <laughs> so it, it's, uh, but I'm, uh, I'm on when it comes to that. Like I'll just dabble in just about everything, and then I won't look, and it'll all oh, still be there because the kids have it in their lunch or whatever, or they have their snacks, and it's like I just don't eat it for a week. And then whenever it comes to a certain day, I'm like, hey, look, I'm eating it again. See, Luke, I think Seth has it figured out. Yeah, I think he does. Because I that's, why, I, that's why he's always fucking shredded, because he just dabbles a little bit here and there. He I, I, and he also I, does like an hour of cardio every day. And of course, I will <laughs> say that I dabbled a little too much because I'm not in the greatest condition right now because, like, Hannah's pregnant, and, like, every night we had a snack together. I was like, but, oh, look, and then I realize I'm like, I'm snacking every day. It's no longer a snack. This is my way of life, and I think I need to lose some fucking weight. <laughs> um, but I don't believe that. I saw you put a picture, sorry, Luke, but you put a picture up like th of three days ago or four days ago. You were still fucking all this shit. Was yeah, all sorry, yes, like Seth, though, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not in good condition. Fuck Wait off. a minute. You know what? We can find he's, it. Fuck this shit. He, his glutes are in. He's peeled out of his mind. Mm -hmm. He's pretty shush. Yeah, it's because I've been on a fucking strict diet for the past three weeks. Fuck's sake. Come on, we don't. We're not buying this shit. You don't cheat. You don't know how to cheat. Here You're right. Uh, in in comparison to you fuckers, I do. I, I'm like, a, I am a preschooler. <laughs> I'm a preschooler. Preschooler. All right. No, that's probably why Phil and I find it quite easy to get over three hundred pounds. Exactly. Because we eat like fat fucks. Yeah, we're disgusting people. Uh, why is the, uh, why your, why has my belly? I have a question. I, bi I binge and what, go up. Yeah, the pink, the pink, purple, uh, the pink pump cover. This it's one? the second picture. Yeah, that's the one I took. Yeah, yeah. that's the one I uh, saw. You're so fat, sir. Yeah, this is horrible. Oh, what the oh, fuck is this? Oh, you should be ashamed of yourself, you fat. You f this what is are you fucking saying? You two still compete co professionally. I haven't competed in three years. <laughs> I have no this is <laughs> this is. You know what's impressive? I have to say, like, you should really do. Uh, an entire tutorial about how to shrink your waist because your fucking waist was twice this size when you used to compete. Yeah. Like, how did you look at this? Is like norm. This is like a good size waist now. Uh, it's an illusion. I twisted my hips a little bit there, uh, <laughs> but it's uh, for me. It was just it's just controlling my eating habits. That was all I. That's all I do is yeah. just control my eating habits. Yeah, you but you don't. Stuff. You seem like you have a lot of self control just in general. Yeah. Uh, what's that? You just, like you just like well because Fuad struggles. I mean, because literally, like if you put pizza in Fuad's house, it'd be like a pig. Yeah. Look at the truffles. And you I can't stop. It. Yeah. Whereas you're you're very much like oh I don't need to do that. 
I see yeah, like, no. you don't have any goals in mind. You're still doing your cardio. You're still doing your training. You're still eating your meals. You're still peeled. Well, that, that takes a lot of self-control, especially when there's no like incentive behind that, apart from wanting to do it for yourself. It's, I have to feel good. It's all about just me feeling better. Like, I don't like feeling like shit. Like, so that's why I say, like, if there's something, if there's a food that messes with my belly, bro, I'm gone. I get away from it. I'm like, I, I really have to love it to go back to it. There, there is that, there is that internal struggle, that internal battle of like feeling good because your diet's good and feeling good because you've just eaten a whole box of cookies and it's amazing. Oh, and that, that, it sucks. I like, can never, yeah. I, I can never find the medium between those two. Yeah. Because also, if you notice, if you have like a big cheat meal, do you find, I get feel really depressed and like, dog shit the next morning yeah you know what you know what the one thing seth said to me once that has stuck with me and the only reason i don't binge harder than i like i don't i don't binge even nearly remotely like i used to so like i had the i had a like yesterday i ordered a medium instead of a large and i ordered pasta instead of like a two liter of ice cream (laughs) i just think it's better for you so anyway so (laughs) so so i ate that and then i stopped i didn't like go back for more that was it and uh, it's what you said to me was just ha- that you don't want to feel like shit in the morning. That yeah. was the biggest thing that stuck out to me. And you're right, because I hate waking up the next day and like you just feel like absolute garbage. Like, so that's the only it, thing that keeps me from going like crazy now. It, it makes it really hard for me to go do my cardio when I feel like shit. Yeah. And like I look at it as, as if I because even whenever I do feel like shit, I, I know for sure I got to do it. And I'm like, man, I really do not want to go do cardio and just feel like a pile of dog shit. And uh, so the one, there was this kid I used to work with. He, uh, he, he was a fan of mine. We worked together in like 2014, 2015. And uh, we did oil and gas work together. And he came, he got in the truck. We were driving to a job together. And he's like, and uh, he brought up, he's like, man, he's like, did you ever take a shit without a shirt on? And I'm like, yes and he's like do you take the shit without a shirt on just look down and just be like you fucking fat piece of shit look at this belly look at you disgusting pig and i'm like bro where's this coming from he's like i took a shit without a shirt on this morning i need to go on a diet oh i was like I, oh so I, that, that's a, that's a good bit of advice if you think if you're not sure if you've pushed your off season too far <laughs> do a shit without your top on and if you if you're fine with it, you're okay. If you if you're a bit ashamed, probably back off a little bit. <laughs> I've used probably. that. I've used that measuring stick. I've stuck yeah. that in my head now, and I'm like, yeah. whenever I'm like, all right, I'm good. Let's see what it looks like. I think I heard you say it. I think you, Seth, did a commercial. I think you did like an ab commercial or some shit. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, when you're sitting on the toilet and you look down, are you ashamed? And I was like, oh, he's fucking right. Yep. So I did it that night and I'm like, oh, I think I'm eating too much. I got to pull shit back. <laughs> so, so it's, that's like my measuring stick now. Can I fucking, can I sit yep. down and not be embarrassed? Cause I couldn't imagine like Hannah comes in and looks at me when I'm taking a shit with no shirt. And I'll be like, ah, oh, that's what I'm yeah, fucking. Yeah, oh. you're, you're not locking the door. I was just going to ask that. Cause I think, I think this is the only thing you feel and I agree on is that like poo time is our time. That's, oh, that's, oh, you guys are door lockers when you take no, a shit. I'm, I don't oh. even talk to you. Like, if I'm having a shit and she'll like knock on the door, I'm like, hey, uh, and I'm like, do not even come anywhere near. Where that's I'm, how, yeah. Like, that's how I am. I, I'm even like, I, my dog comes in with me for some reason because he's weird and he has to be with me. But that's fine. I don't want, I, this is my time. I don't want to, even, even like public toilets freak me out when I know someone else is in there and you're in the cubicle. I'm like, this is, this is my time and it's being ruined. I don't care about the public toilet. I could go to like a rest stop and sit down and like I'll give a I fuck. I can, like, I can, but like I don't. I just, I'm not. One of those, I'm not one of those guys who can just sit there and just fucking let rip on the. Toilet. No, at home. Like, some guys have no shame. I'm like, you do realize there's yeah. other people in there. They're just like shit. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, what are these guys? Do they have no shame? Dude, Summer will come to the door. Summer will come to the bathroom door to ask me a question. Oh, did you get this done or that done? And I'm like. Can you just give me 10 minutes? Like, just give 10 me 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, he's got like, I'm going to be on my phone. I'm on my phone. I got to fucking. No, but I. So, Seth, you're cool. Like, she just walks in. You're taking a dump. It's cool. It's oh, no, good. no, no. I prefer not. There's always a knock, but it's. Or sometimes she might just open the door. Like, with the kids, whenever, you know, when I was a single parent, yeah. bro, the door was always unlocked. And I was like, fuck it. Like, it is what it is. My life's a mess, anyways. Worst yeah. thing you could do is see me taking a shit, but uh, but no, not I'm I don't. I mean, now you guys are making me second guess myself and think that like I should be in complete isolation and shit. No, 
No one else is time. The, the, one of the worst things as well is if they ever do walk in, which what you, what the fuck you're walking in for, don't ever do that, is when they come in and they walk in and goes, ah, stinks. Yeah, because I'm doing this shit. <laughs> I'm sitting here shitting, literally doing a poo, and you come in, like, you've come in off your own back, you know you shouldn't be in it, and the first thing you say to me is it smells. This is why I don't want you in here embarrassing me. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> really good point Seth yeah, you're not point. you're not al- you're not alone though because you know Cody right my friend yeah, Cody yeah. Mm-hmm. Cody's same thing his fucking girl's in there doing her, her hair and shit he's taking a dump I'm like oh no 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 I'm nobody's obvious. I'm not you're not welcome to do your to do your makeup while I'm shitting yeah oh, okay. what the fuck no 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 I can't <laughs> handle that I don't like whenever someone hears me, like you know whenever you're taking a dump or like you're just about to and it's gonna be like it's gonna just unload yeah, that is not going to be a polite and and great sound. And you're like, this is like, like Luke said, it's crazy embarrassing. Yeah, like it's why I don't is even it, know so, what why is it so embarrassing? Because we've established that I don't mind getting what well, I do mind it, we're getting cut open during. Uh, <laughs> because then, but, but, because but, but, that same, but that same person, if I was so if I'm sat there covered in blood, and she and I'm doing a shit afterwards, she wants to walk in. I'm like, get the fuck out! What are you doing? You have crossed the line. <laughs> and like, why is it that it's such a line that can be crossed? I think it's because you're completely vulnerable. You're you sitting on a toilet. You look like shit. You smell like shit. Like there's nothing but, attractive about it. You know what I mean? But then at the same time, it, my thing is, is the unknown. Like, I don't know what it's going to sound like when it comes out. And I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want, <laughs> I don't do want it, to hear what do it, do it do sounds you know, like for you. Do you ever do it when you know that somebody can hear you? So you like soften the toilet with something. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> so the tissue catches it. So it doesn't make a noise. Yeah? No, because it's the fart that makes the noise. not the plop. Yeah, the anything, prop, anything. The, yeah, anything. The, 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 the fart and the plop combination. If you, do, <laughs> if you do it by accident, you just sat there like, ah, fuck. You know, when me and my wife started dating, I used to have, a, I, put, I literally put a stereo in the bathroom. So I didn't even give oh. a shit. I would, because I was in a one bedroom apartment. I didn't have any money. So like the bathroom was like right next to the fucking living room. Yep. So I would go into the bathroom and I would turn the fucking radio on. Because yep. turning, turning the tap on is not enough. It's not, it's not masking anything. No. <laughs> turning the tap on is never enough <laughs> so i literally put a stereo in there i turn the stereo on i'm like you know she knew what i was doing but i don't care i'd rather her know what i'm doing and not hear it yes and fucking then have her hearing me fucking you know fuck man as bodybuilders we all the shit we eat no so anyway it's not going to be pretty Mm-mm. yeah yeah Mm-mm. all right so next question is which one of you got <laughs> I'm just gonna move. We're just gonna move on from that. <laughs> we spent way too much time talking about that. Uh, which one of you guys has? Ah, this is actually really interesting. Okay. I kind of want to change the question a little bit, so don't answer right away. Which one of you guys has tried each other's supplements, and what do you think of them? Uh, Luke's being redcon, obviously. Can't wait for this. So, have I forget the way I was gonna twist it, but maybe we just answer the question. Have you tried? Have you tried any other supplements, uh, Seth? Or are you just trying? Have you tried just, have you just been doing your own? I haven't tried yours. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and Redcon, I did total, I've taken total war. I did, you know, I took Blackstones. I took, uh, I took all of Hani's, well, every single product that Hani has. Um, I took Jeff Long's. I took Steel Supplements. Um, bro, I'm a supplement guy. Is yours the best? Supplements. What's that? Is yours the best? Yes. Do you feel I like- say it's the best because- I built the company based on what I wanted and what yeah. I wanted and what my philosophy is what people always ask. Mm. So people would ask me like, what do you think of this product? And I tell them what I thought of the product. And I'd be like, the downfall is, is that it has crashed. And I'm like, I didn't like the crash. I don't like this from a stimulant product. So I was like, if I ever make a stimulant product, this is how I'm going to make it. Yeah. And then it goes into exactly like I just built it how I wanted it. So it, it caters to my thought process, my philosophies, all of me. And, uh, you know, like we have new products coming out this year and everything that we do, there's always a glimpse and a flash of me along with what we believe and what we've listened to from our customers. What's some of the news? Can you tell us any of the new stuff you're coming out with or is it a surprise? Um, uh, we're doing a, we're doing a sleep aid that has been the, I'm not big on sleep aids, but it has been a, such a high requested product that I'm like, I, I didn't know this many people took them. So yeah. when I did my research on them and I've taken, I've taken a handful of them. Yeah. Um, I remember taking them when I was cleaned and trend the fuck out of my mind, yeah. not like I am now. Uh, so uh, we're, the one we came up with was again, uh, foolproof 
a foolproof uh, ingredient panel that has uh, patented ingredients, high quality stuff. And um, I really like it, uh, but I don't like them from the standpoint of them building up a tolerance and becoming reliable yeah. on them. I think they have a purpose. Um, and then we have a new pre-workout that, uh, that we've been doing that, uh, we've been toying with for quite a while. Uh, yeah. and that'll probably come out in the summer sometime. Okay. But don't you have three pre-workouts already? No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you come out with one, is, what's this one? Why is this one like different? How is it better? Uh, it's not better. It's just different. Okay. Uh, so I like non, I'm a non-stim guy. This is another non-stim pump product. Oh, okay. It's going okay. to completely cater to a day whenever I just want to go in and train for 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. It's okay. not like something that I like with, with hydraulic or non-stim pre-workout. The goal with it was to have a non-stimulant pre-workout to make you like the feeling that you need to work out. Yeah. So you get the, the carnison where it gives the car carnison and the niacin where you get the flush feeling you get taken yep. over. You're like, Oh fuck. Like the blood is moving. I have to work out. And yeah. then it's a full, and then it's again, a full panel of ingredients that says like, it's going to, it's going to not only give you the pump, it's going to help keep the pump. If you yeah. add a carbohydrate with it, like 25 grams, you'll get full as fuck. Like all these things mm -hmm. um, are, are, are put together for that. And then uh, I wanted something different as well. Do you think um, the hardest part of our industry, because I just launched, you know, last yeah. week, do you think the hardest part is education? Yes. Because I'm, I'm uh, noticing, but, I'm I'm noticing on my on my end that seems to be the most difficult part. Part is explaining why and what, and the reasons why you do things and what you added and all that. In the beginning. Okay. Yes. In so the beginning, I think that uh, we have a lot of information on on the line uh, mm -hmm. about it, and people know. Uh, people also uh, people just gravitate to what they like, uh, like seventh gear it, uh, and, and ignition switch is one of <laughs> is my number two favorite pre-workout and it's our stimulant and pump pre-workout has a little bit of stims, a yeah. little bit of pump, yeah. but people fucking love seventh gear because it is 500 megs of high stim fucking eat you alive. Yeah. And yeah. that's not my style. I take it like once a week, but people buy the fuck out of it. Yeah. I think that's what we're planning on doing next. Cause we released the two pump, the two pre-workouts. I'm not a big stim guy. So nope. I like, we have 300 milligrams in our, in our stim pre-workout mm -hmm. and, uh, it's not really a lot considering what's on the market. So people are asking for a stim pre work They're like, well, well we want to mix something because our pump products called bloodshot. And they're like, we want to mix something with bloodshot. Yep. And you can't mix the one we currently have because it's like, then you're just stacking way too many ingredients. So I mm -hmm. think we're going to do, I think we're gonna do a lighter load ingredient wise, but higher stim pre-workout that and, you can stack. And that's just the process of learning customers. Like Luke can even say, I'm guaranteeing like, I know with him, it's going to be heavy on total war because yeah. like it is exactly what the fuck it says it is. Um, and, uh, and then MRE is, is one of the biggest uh, meal replacements in the game today. So, and uh, I mean, that's the, the fun part is, is with all the, with all customers, bro, you can try a million different, different supplement companies. And there's going to be one that you just, you're like, I like a product from here. I like a product from here. And I like this product from this company. Mm -hmm. me that was my favorite part of bodybuilding like i found out like you know when it when it was comes to to eva eva Jin, bro evp was the shit you remember back in the day yeah. 2009 the first, the first 2010 one. the first one he made dude the first one he made i would go to the gym and i'm like what the fuck is this pump and i was I, I and i was stronger i think so too i think, I think he put. <laughs> i'm telling you because after the first like after the first couple of years it wasn't the same something happened mm -hmm. like, yeah so i don't know but what about you luke have you are you a supplement guy you don't ever seem like really a supplement guy like you like I just think, well no, i didn't think about supplements is people amaze me when people flatly just say oh they don't work what the f what do you mean yeah that's a little, it's a like little if crazy you're using and it helps you sleep well it worked if you take yeah. a pre-workout and it made you feel like you're off your nut it worked if you're you taking amino acids and with carbohydrate powders, well, they work. If you're taking a protein powder, it's like it's protein. What do you expect? You know what I think that's from though? <laughs> I think that's I think that's from the muscle tech days. I think remember muscle tech used to put like take this and you'll get a thousand times stronger. And yeah, uh, yeah, I no, think no, that I think the residual of that is the public is like, you're all fucking lying to me. Yeah, there is so, that, but it's like that's part of the, one of the reasons I like Redcon is because they never tell me to say a product's good if yeah. I don't like. Yeah, and for the most part, they're all the products are good. 
Like, well, and, and it's like, but they also have, they have all the shit that I would just buy and use anyway. And if people yeah. look at the supplements that I use, it's like, I use the, the GI juice, it's greens. I use a fade out to help me sleep. I use, um, obviously all the pre and intraposts and stuff. I mean, everyone uses- Well, you the, like the big, you like the big noise the most though, right? I like, so I like big noise and mental trigger pre. Yeah. Um, total War occasionally, as I said, Total War's a bit strong for me. A bit of a, a bit of a bitch. <laughs> it's it's exactly what it says. It's fucking yeah. strong. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and it's like, you can't say that carbohydrate powder doesn't work. Of course it fucking works. It's a carb powder. And it's like, every, and the, 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 the grunt essential amino is there's, there's just so many just basic supplements that Redcon do that just, they have exactly what I need. I think that's, I think that's what it is with supplement companies these days. As long as people are doing stuff that is not, they're not trying to be gimmicky. They're just saying, well, this is, this is what it is. And we've just chosen the best ingredients. We made it taste as good as it can be. But I had- that's why I'm always telling people though, if you're going to buy your supplements, buy them from a bodybuilder. That's just yeah. my opinion. You know what I mean? Like when I look around the industry, whether it's Seth or Jeff Long or me or John Meadows or, you know, Dorian's new line, like, or Redcon, it seems like people that are from the bodybuilding community have better, a little yeah. bit, a little bit more honest run of their ingredients yeah. and their products. Yeah. Just what I mean, I've no, just what I've noticed personally. Yeah, I don't, so I, mean, I, just, I just don't understand why people say things that they say supplements don't work. Well, what, what are you expecting? I just think, I think, I'm telling you though, I think they're expecting what Muscle Tech used to promise them. That's yeah, a leftover, I, that's leftover. Like the supplement. That's, that's so old though. No, no, no. But listen though, the supplement industry now is all about transparency. This is our product. There's no fucking proprietary blends. There's no bullshit. Our, our athletes don't lie to you. But that's just started in the last like three years. Think yeah, about before. Yeah, think about before that. It was always just pay that guy to say whatever the fuck he's got to say and just, you know, let's get by with whatever we can get by legally and say something. And it was all just about tricking people into buying the shit, which is what advertising's for, but it just doesn't work anymore. So I think yeah. that like, I think that uh, sentiment of supplements are bullshit is left over from like decades of just, I think so. I think so. But I mean, there's no wild claims coming from supplement companies anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. So no, yeah. I th- I think that the big thing is is uh, for for me, whenever I left Blackstone, my personality was no longer meeting what Blackstone was. Like yeah. how PJ ran the company and my personality and what I wanted to build for myself didn't match. And the mm-hmm. same thing goes for many. So whenever it comes to like, I think the 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 company also has to meet the 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 spokesperson or the person that sponsored all of it like with axe and sledge bro there's some of the most high quality high quality ingredients that you can put in a product mixed with a great deal of fuckery like there's not one name of our ingredients that's normal i think one might lemon lime <laughs> that's it other than that it's just our personal flair and the same thing goes with with redcon like redcon yeah. goes across every single different type of person in the industry and that was their goal. They're the biggest, one of the biggest supplement companies out there. And they appeal to every person that has any bit of military knowledge. Yeah. Like what a great way, what a great marketing way to go about things. And Redcon supports every single different person in every single different fitness industry, strongman, powerlifting, bodybuilding, fitness, you name it. They're spending so, a ton of, spending a ton of marketing dollars that they, oh, they doing, spend. Yeah. That, that budget is extremely large that's but they're putting it all to work right so um okay next question is uh challenge seth to drink a whole bottle of jack daniels during the podcast (laughs) listen listen i like to have a drink every like my business partners and i are big big bourbon guys big scotch guys every thursday each one of us have a different job within our we stay in our fucking lane but then like on thursdays we get together we have a drink uh, you know, on Friday, we might have another one together, but like, I'm, I, I can drink, I can drink a good bit, but I, I just do it as like, uh, I take the edge off. It's kind of yeah. like food. I'm not yeah. a binge guy. I just, yeah. I can cut it off. Uh, meanwhile, like if you go out with them, if we go out to dinner together, yeah. like everybody's together and, and Uber and we took our wives and everything. I cannot hang with them dudes. No way. Eh? Oh my God. They make me seem like what's, girl. what's your, what's your dinner time. I'm like three doubles. That's my dinner time drinks, three doubles, four doubles. I'm good. Yeah. That's usually where I'll cut it. I'll do, I can do, I usually do like uh three doubles, three or four doubles. And then I'll have an after dinner drink. 
Like, okay. uh, like if we, if we took it, if we got an Uber or something, I'll do an after dinner drink, like an old fashioned or like, uh, yeah, it's typically what I do. That's three, what I, I was. Three doubles is quite a well. lot. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm oh. tuned the fuck up. I'm not drunk at that point. I feel good. I'm not like, I'm not fucking wasted. Three doubles. Is not, well, I don't know. I mean, no, it's enough to set the night off. Really, It's enough to feel good. Oh, I think yeah. it's not like, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I won't. I will be able to wake up and do cardio. Let's put yeah. it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How 100%. I feel about it. Yeah. Uh, what do you feel most of the top ten pros are doing during this time with no gym and no shows? Are they coming off the gear, or are they still taking quite a bit to maintain your mass? So I know a couple guys that are on. What do you guys say before I I go ahead? Do you just know anybody who's dealing with this other than yourself, Luke? Uh, I don't know what James is doing, and he's doing the same as I am which is uh, so go ahead tell people we have both of access to a gym um so I'm, I'm quite lucky enough to have a key to muscle works so i can go and train there on my own and he's with the same with kings so that's likely what we're going to do and as far as your gear though you've tapered down right because there's yeah, still I'm, I'm, still, I'm, now, I'm still, now not officially in a contest rep anymore so i've had to like cut all the all the all that stuff out and i've just left testing it on its own i i'm still seeing the shit that people are writing that they should stay on their fucking cycles the whole way and i'm like man if this lasts three months what are you gonna do be you're gonna do this home gym bullshit workouts and you'd be going on full cycles of like a, a gram of test a week and shit like it doesn't make any fucking sense so i, I mean, just well, to, to me like whenever i'm on it's, it's only it's, it's to do with my contest season so, well you go on in the off season too though you uh haven't. i haven't done for the last kind of two i haven't done like a cycle cycle i've just well, wait a minute <laughs> Okay, wait a minute. This is cycle cycle. Okay, okay. We gotta figure. We gotta figure out the terminology now. Right. So I went like so in the past. I'd normally do like a heavy one right in the middle of the off season. Yeah, I don't do that anymore. Yeah, but you're not just TRT all off season. No, 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 no. But what yeah. I mean, I don't blast anymore. I wait until the contest period for that. So what I'm saying is that when I'm but you have but you have a bump in the off season somewhere. <sighs> yeah, maybe. I think I think I think I'll, I'll depends how long the off season. It depends how long because I'm I'm listening from a third party. Uh, what you're saying is, is you don't go balls deep anymore. No, in the off season. Yeah, yeah. You don't go. You don't because I mean, I think, and and that's because you're a seasoned professional. I don't pre. Like, I don't. I don't pre contest either anymore. It's just, um, I think it's those days of trying to like blast the shit out of it. It's over. It's not. I don't think it's, we'll go. I would say in all aspects. So is what is is for lack of better phrases in all aspects of like putting it all into it. The training, the food, the protocol everything is on point when you're on in a in a contest rep yeah, 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 yeah. everything and then yeah. and then in a in an off season setting you haven't done like okay i'm really going to put everything i have into it to gain say another 20 pounds no, no, so the, like you yeah, don't do that anymore because now you're just doing like you're like okay i'm going to do these three items or x amount of items to get yeah, this yeah so like in the off season in the off season the only thing i'll like push to the extreme is the training and that's that's not my that's been my mentality. Okay, but that's all. These are all relative terms. Like you're still on a good cycle. You're just not on a fucking. Okay, I'll, I'll do like 500 milligrams of test rather than say a thousand plus something else. Really? Yeah. That shit's mild. Yeah, and I may I may I mean I might throw in like 300 primo on top of that, depending on how my bloods look. But dude, then you're honestly a. I don't want to sit here and sound like a fucking drug mule, but. You're fucking. That's mellow. No, like, no, that's no, not... no, it's just, no. It's because I, I've, I've, I have the amount of muscle that I need. I'm just trying yeah. to keep like, what I have better. So yeah, I, I don't need, blame you. If, some, if, if somebody turned around to me and said, "You got to put on another ten pounds of muscle," but well, that's not going to cut it. So I've got to do something else. Yeah. Because of, because I'm at that point in my career now, where everyone's like, "You're big enough. Just make what you have better." I don't need to take the piss in the off season anymore. I just don't. Yeah. Which I'm happy about, to be fair. It probably it's actually, actually you're very fortunate to be that way as well. Yeah, yeah. And I got I got to this point relatively quickly. And I think and, and one thing that it kind of re, in my head it make it, I realize it it's actually still is working well is because I'm making still making improvements just as quickly in my physique. I can see it in my pictures. Well, because you're not working on bulk amounts of mass anymore. You're just trying to add a, an inch here, an inch there, like we were talking yeah. about earlier so, with the Dexter yeah. thing. So when it comes to building body parts, the only way you can improve body parts, the only way you can improve body parts is with your training. So that's why I say the only thing I take the piss out of now, the only thing I push to the limit. I don't really understand that com- that, that you, okay, comment. You, 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 okay, if you keep your training... You, instead, you, 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 you make body parts better by making them bigger, and you make them bigger by taking juice and training oh, you your fucking ass off. Okay, so if you want to improve your chest, just increasing your food is not going to improve your chest if it's already... If you're at this level I'm, I'm at now, okay. just 
just eating more and doing the same training is not going to make my chest bigger because it hasn't. No, changed. I didn't say that. No, so, so that's what I'm saying. The thing yeah. that will make the improvements to body parts is the training. But what I'm saying is when people talk about improving body parts, usually that means making them bigger. And yeah. by making them bigger, that's why people take good amount, a good amount of, of gas or a good amount yeah, of yeah, gear yeah, yeah. No, of course, to I'm, make I the body part bigger. So I don't, I know that, but I'm saying the only way, the only way you can improve singular body parts and not gain overall just size everywhere is training. So if you're, you're talking, you're talking about targeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You can only target yeah. body parts. With, you can't target, you can't target your biceps with gear unless you don't, unless you're talking about SEO. But what I'm okay, but wait a minute. What, wait a minute. Let's go. I'm pretty sure this is quite obvious. I don't know. No, why no it's not it's not obvious. <laughs> Take a step back. It's not obvious. So if you're if you're trying to grow your bicep muscle, you're trying to put muscle on. That's what the fucking juice is for. Yeah, I know. But so I'm what you, I don't understand what I, you mean then. It's Seth, do you know what I mean? Uh yes, I am following. Okay, okay. Seth, maybe Seth can ex explain it to me then. All right, so I think what, what, what Luke is trying to allude to, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, okay, but well. he's saying that he, if he keeps one of these factors, if the three factors that we have here is gear, uh, training, and food, yeah. okay, we got all these three. He's yeah. saying that he's going to keep this constant of gear steady. This one's not changing. Okay. And he's like, I'm eating a good bit of food. He's like, but if I need to make this body part better, He's like, I need to increase the training. Maybe it could be increasing the, the style, make it more intense. Yeah. Or maybe I could hit it twice a week or every third day I'm going to train arms. I think he's saying that these two factors are going to stay in a certain, in a, in a, in a certain level play, playing field. And I'm yeah. going to work these harder. Yeah. And maybe the food might come into play. And then the third factor being the gear would be the last yeah. one that he would have. Okay, so I, I agree with all of that. But let me just, I just want to say where I was going with it. So see if this makes sense to you guys. So let's say you're on your 500 milligrams of test or 300 milligrams of Primo. And you're like, I need more muscle, whether it be just in your biceps or in a host of different, of different body parts. Mm -hmm. If your food and training is at peak level, yeah. wouldn't you think to go, maybe I'll take 750 and 400? Yeah, maybe, I, but I haven't needed to, so I haven't. Because I, I would say that okay, I, if you don't I, need to, if you don't need to, then yeah, exactly. So I've done it. I'm doing. I'm doing what I need to. So let's say I needed to bring. So if, if somebody says to me, "You need to bring up your hamstrings," versus you need to bring up, you need to put on thirty pounds of muscle. Let's just say, for example. Okay. And okay. And I've got two years to do it. If it, for the hamstrings, I'm going to directly look at my training. I'm not going to just. I'm going to increase my increase my gear and my uh, my training and my food just for my hamstrings okay? i so, got you i got you so, so, got when you. It, so at this level when it comes to weaker body parts the only thing i'll make the most pretty much 99 percent of the change i make is to training only and I'll i got sure you food my food and the drugs are enough there for me to still grow but i'm not trying to gain 30 pounds of muscle anymore so for the people listening then the only time you would increase gear is if you're looking at overall mass look and, and it's not and it's not happening taking cycles and doing bodybuilding is about building your body right yeah. I, I am at a point now where I'm completely okay with my overall mass. It's no, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm uh, saying we, we, we are because you asked you asked me. What no, I'm you doing. answered your. I'm talking about if you yeah. want to give advice to the masses. Yeah, so I am. I am. Yeah. So if you get so when you get so if you guys out there like I was when I'm trying to get to that certain level of mass, you do need to push to the envelope. You do. That's what you need to do. Yeah. I'm not saying you don't, but when you get to that level, you don't need to continue pushing if when you get there. That's yeah. when you start running into problems. Do you agree with the statement that when you, and I'll ask you, Seth, since, you know, me and Luke are kind of just talking over you, which I apologize for, but. I'm listening. Um, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> um, do you agree that if you reach a certain level of, like, if you're taking a certain level of gear, right? Do you think you can go back from that? Like, let's say you've been taking, I'll give you an example. Let's say you've been taking like a thousand milligrams a week for like 10 years. And you decide, you know what? I'm going to start taking less. Do you think your body can still do what it, what it should be doing and feel the way it should be feeling if you've cut that dose in half? And cut it in half? Yeah, like let's say you decided, you know what? I don't want to take, I want to take less. I'm going to take Luke's approach and I'm going to take less and I'm going to focus just on my training. Do you think the guy that's already reached that previous level for a long period of time can do that and still make the progress? Um, I think it depends on the person, to be honest. I think that that's a gen it's too generalized to answer that way because uh, with me taking like 400 megs of test a week, like I know where I, I know where I end up. 
I know exactly what I'm going to look like. I know exactly what I'm going to feel like the whole nine. Whenever I take a thousand MIGs, I know exactly what I'm going to look like. I know how it's going to transpire. I think that that's the, the most dangerous part about talking publicly and generalizing about, about steroids to the yeah. public is because uh, you have to understand that this is such a long game. Mm. Like every, all, all three of us have been doing this for so long that we're like, yeah, we figured it out. We were very, we had the craziness to us, but then we also had a very realistic, logical side to us that said, I'm not going to be in this game for, for just a quick second. I'm going to be in it for a long time. So therefore I'm going to take each step. Whenever you take 500 MIGs of test with, you know, 200 or 500 MIGs of test and 400 MIGs of DECA, you're like, Hey, let's see what happens over the next 12 weeks. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're going to be like, you're going to manipulate your food. You're going to manipulate your training. But then some kids today and some people today are like, fuck it, I'm taking a thousand. And you're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. They you can't they, start they, there. to jump too fast. Yeah. But, but my thing is, I think that, um, I mean, uh, where I am, I mean, I used to, I, whenever I used to blast shit, yeah, I'd blast, you know, 1200 megs of test. I dabbled into 1500 megs of test to see what would happen see what I feel like. I noticed that just more side effects came. It wasn't that I actually got any better. Yep. I became more aggressive in the gym. I became more of an animal. I disregard my, my mind, my mental state started to change, but I didn't notice a huge difference in muscular gain. I didn't mm. notice this huge difference. I gained an edge, which I liked, Yeah. which then you start. Now that's semantics. Now yeah. you're like, oh, am I going to continue at this level just for the feeling or is that the actual benefit? I like that. Um, I like that edge, that, that, that edge you're talking about. I, I like that aspect of it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's me because I'm fucked up, but I, <laughs> I, guess. I mean, that's, it's, it's absolutely, I mean, every, I mean, I think that, I think that that's part of, part of this, what makes this sport very dangerous because whenever you dabble above 1500 MIGs and go to 1800 MIGs, or I know guys that were doing two, two G's a week, it's kind of like, okay, welcome to the show. Yeah. Now it starts to get scary because those animalistic instincts start to come out in us. And, um, and, uh, but me personally at the dosages I take, if I say, let's say 500 megs a week, 400 megs a week, 600 megs a week, anywhere in there, like that is where I feel the most comfortable. 400 megs is where I hang out. I know I'm 225 pounds. I feel great. I look good naked. Everything's good. And I know that if I double that, I know what's going to occur. So you said, you know what you're going to look like at a thousand and you know what you're going to look like at 400, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think you can ever look like you looked at a thousand with 400? That's kind of my question. No. So you, but my, my theory on that, it's only a theory because I'm not a juice expert. So nobody fucking shit on me. But my theory about that is when you go to a certain level and you're there for long enough, you need to be there to feel a certain way. You can't go back and still get that feeling. Oh yeah. You have to become okay mentally. No, no. I mean like the way you look physically at a thousand. Mm hmm if you've been at a thousand for a long period of time, you can't look that way at 400. Can you? I don't think so. Yeah. Luke. No, I agree. Okay. Just, I just want to clarify for my own sake and maybe anybody else listening cares. No, so that's, right. so that's the reason why we say go slow because if you jump to a thousand and you're there for a while, you fucking can't go back from that. Yeah. No, so the whole you didn't build a foundation either. That's right. I, I think that's why it goes back to what I said. It's like many people are like might listen to what I've said and be like, "Yeah, he's talking shit." So no, no, no. I've done all the other stuff in the past. Yeah. Now I don't need to, but it also gives me a room to go up during my contest prep. Yeah. Which is yeah. why, I, which is why this last prep I was doing, which obviously I'm not now, I got up to like three ten and I dropped to to like two seventy real quick, and then I just yeah. stayed there. Yeah. And got better. Whereas in the past, I normally my weight would drop a lot slower. I'll can... say that you that you and Antoine or the two guys that over the over recently that you watch, you guys actually have off seasons and you have contest preps. Yeah. yeah. Like you post regularly, you show all that. that I like love, I love that Anton's one of the best people to follow for off season. Cause he gets really big. <laughs> but, I mean, mate, look at, look at the, look at the improvements he's making. That's how it's done. But, yeah. and, and, and so goes to you though. You do the same. You I know, like whenever thoughts. I think, we, I think we all did though i think I like McDonald's. That's, that's my problem oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, that was a, but it, what i'm saying what i mean is is like 
you don't see many guys putting in the work in the off season. Like, you know, back in the day, like you were, you were about to say for, I think that's what you were going to say. We yeah. all did that. Like, yeah. of course there was off seasons, but I don't see it. Um, bro. I just see guys stay in really good shape during the, during the off season as well. Like, like there's nobody that's bro. Look at the, well, the improvements I'm that trying you to, made, Luke. I'm tr- Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say like, like, if you are still, if you are still in like really good shape in the off season and you need to get bigger, like, I'm like, oh, you're not going to look good during, during contest prep. You're going to look stringy again. You're going to look small. You, also, like, add you, thickness. You, you can get away of using less gear by pushing your weight up with food as well. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But that makes it really hard. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of the, I'm trying to think of pro bodybuilders now that I watch on, I follow on Instagram and if they have off seasons, cause now that you actually said it, I haven't really seen anybody actually blow up or is it because they're just not documenting? Cause people don't like to show when they're like, you know, not fucking ripped or whatever. You know what I mean? Like yeah, but you can still wear a tank top. Yeah. I'm tank top shape. Everybody yeah. does tank top shape. <laughs> That's the best shape. I think. That's the best shape. I think, yeah, dude. Yeah. I agree. No, um, I, I put it this way. The one, one bodybuilder that pops out to me immediately is Regan Grimes. Like, like I want to see him get thick as fuck, like big, big. I think and, he's made talking to Regan and talking to Dorian because Dorian trains him. Yeah, I think they've made a concerted effort not to get like that because he's trying to keep his waist tiny. And well, that's again, yeah. like that's going back to a coach and talking to him and learning yeah. stuff that he doesn't talk about. But I'm like, wait, and I'm like, Regan, I'm like, he's still a young guy, so he still yeah. has a ton of time. But yeah. I'm like, I haven't seen him look like this yet. Yeah, yeah, that really like everything looks like just a fucking complete balloon. Yeah, everything. like I'm, <laughs> I'm wait because fucking Antoine was pretty close to it yeah. a couple of times. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh buddy, dude, he's, he's three thirty at one point. Yeah, like, what the dude. fuck? That's so. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, he's who came to my mind, and I'm like, I wonder if it's going to happen because I know he works with Dorian, and, and I'm like, man, like is he going to? Somebody, sorry, somebody just said Ian, and that's a really good good example actually, because Ian hasn't gotten like super big and puffy, but I think it's because he, I think it's literally because he genetically can't. Well, that's what I do. Ian, Ian's it looks massive and insane, but he yeah. always looks really good. He doesn't look like he, I never see a picture of Ian. Like I see a picture of Antoine, and I'm like, uh. <laughs> so when I see a picture of myself in the off season, I'm like, uh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's too much. Just like when I, I've never looked at Ian and be like, you've been eating, mate. <laughs> Ian, and you know what I've, I've talked Ian to always, Ian always looks really good I think uh, I talked to I talked to him about that on a podcast when he did it with me and I, he says he eats but no, he just no, has that yeah, yeah yeah so I mean Ian's just fuck off Ian with your good genetics <laughs> <laughs> like, like J, J, James as well like James can be a fat cunt and he still looks really lean yeah. really and I'm saying you like he'll be like 310 and he'll just be legs will be covered in veins Really? Am I not even that muscular when I'm dry and, and like stage ready? <laughs> I um, I wanted to ask you guys this question because I thought it'd be interesting. Uh, if you could be genetically elite in one muscle group, what would it be? Anus. Your anus? Penis. <laughs> penis. <laughs> like to me, like genetically, like Phil Heath level genetics, penis, mate. Really? Ah. Mate, of course. Don't don't. don't know. If one of you bell and says, "Oh, my calves," get in the bin. That's the, <laughs> to be the best. Come on. Dude, you know, like I don't know how many how many women you think actually like like a 12 inch cock? I never did I say 12 inches? Okay, well, what do you mean when you say a Phil Heath type like a genetic Phil, cock? Phil isn't the biggest. Phil, Phil isn't the muscularity. Phil isn't the biggest. <laughs> yeah, the, what are you, what are you talking was, about? Luke, are you talking about symmetry or I'm muscularity? What are you talking about? The best combination of size, symmetry, condition, thickness, density, everything. <laughs> Just the, the, the best. I don't know what the fuck that means. Does it mean? I mean, like a mushroom tip? Does it mean like a pointy tip? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, just like, I have no idea what the best fucking muscle is either. I don't know. Arms. Arms. Oh, you do arms, dude. Arms is the one body part that can never be too big. Look at look, look at and it makes look at Roly. I look at Roly. If you imagine Roly with no arms and no shoulders. You're right. Is it is it really like is he really bigger than everybody? Not really. It's his arms are just fucking like Compton. Yes. 
no compton was great everywhere though yeah that's what, no but compton's arms were so insane it made him the it, made, it was just like his arms were above everything else let's be honest yeah yeah when he used to do a side chest or side tricep i'd always be like Pfft. yeah but be, he was so big everywhere else i'm when i think of roly i'm like if you literally chopped off his shoulders and just looked at his torso and legs you'd be like he's still a great bodybuilder but he's not far superior to everybody but when you put the shoulders and arms back on you're like holy fuck that's like a Crazy different genetics yeah it's different right so i don't know i think or back back can never be too big either i was just gonna say back or arms that's where i was yeah I'll, I'll I'll take gonna, you from my perspective i'll agree with you but you'd still go like cock if though you had your choice of anything i could i, I can still be a marathon runner yeah, why do you always take the absolute body but a me headway? So you're saying if you can choose any part of your body, because hey, I, 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 I gotta tell you something, I, I like perfect, I gotta tell you something, I like my dick, I'm okay with it. I don't, yeah, need, I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm I don't absolutely, I don't need to change it, but I can change I, my arms, yeah, right. And I'm absolutely <laughs> fine with mine as well. Apparently, not. You're looking to change it, you're like, I want a new one. Wait, you asked if I could have the best of something, and that's what I'd have the best of. But nobody would ever know. You'd have the best dick, and nobody would see it. Who cares? Uh, hey, hey, this is this is brought up. Do you guys? Uh, what's the guys? I just thought of this. If you had the about, best dick, a lot of people would know about it. That's where I'm going. What do you, have you guys? The one bodybuilder that has the fucking massive dick. He's um. Have you seen have you seen him yet? He was Wait, on gonna, this is a screen share <laughs> screen share issue. Here we go. There's a uh so uh, about six months ago, maybe eight months ago, I was I was just following through everything and um and there's this bodybuilder that had this fucking he was oh uh, what's his name? Anyway, yeah. he was in his he was in his posing trunks. You don't have a name? Fucking, what's that? You don't have a name? Is he black or <laughs> black or white? He's a black, he's a black guy. Oh man, I can't believe I don't know his name. I can't remember it. Classic or bodybuilding? Uh, he's in pro, he's, he's a pro bodybuilder. Okay. He's I don't a know. pro bodybuilder. Um, oh. I, got, I got nothing to look up now. I can't just type in like black guy bodybuilder. Nothing will come up. <laughs> <laughs> I can guarantee you something will come up if you type that. Yes, there we, <laughs> oh man, I can't believe that there was, I can't remember the dude's All right, name. We'll, we'll come back to it. We'll come Anyways, back to it if you remember. Yeah, we'll, we'll give that one a miss, sorry. Anyways, he was on there and somebody kept, keeps, com they always comment about his dick. And he's like, hey guys, if you haven't noticed, I'm also a pro bodybuilder. <laughs> but like, this fucking thing is out of hand. It's, 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 I'm sure, it Kai's, like fucking I'm, arm. I'm sure Kai's done a food post like that. What yeah. That? I've his, seen people. When yeah. his dick's like, doesn't even look like a dick, it just looks like a beach ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, dude, like, him. Stuffed is, into is, his is trunk. The, is the fucking grapefruit still in there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, I let's, wish I remember his name. Let's move on. We'll do uh, we'll do a couple more because it's been a little while. So uh, we'll skip the gear question. We already did a bunch of gear. When you guys <laughs> when you guys started bodybuilding, who was your favorite pro? Seth, you want to go first? Jake Cutler. Simple, yeah. that easy. You know was, for sure. It was, it was always it was always Jay, just because I don't know. It just related to me right away. He was a big he was a big white guy. He was he was, I thought he was kind of short. Um, he just made me feel like I could do it. Uh, I also, I mean, I followed everybody. I have VHS tapes, DVDs, you name it. Uh, Dorian Yates. I was a huge Dorian Yates fan. Like, like I had the sweatshirts cut just like him, like tied shit around my head, like the whole nine. Um, yeah, Dorian Yates, Jay Cutler was my number one Dorian Yates. And then, uh, uh, I loved, I, I, once I found out about Sean Ray being five foot six, I was a big Sean Ray fan. Then I stopped being a Sean Ray fan. I think everybody, I think everybody stopped being a Sean Ray fan. Yeah. That was one of those <laughs> things. Uh, and so a big Jay Cutler and, and huge Dorian Yates fan. I grew up in bodybuilding when Ronnie and Jay were like going head to head at every show. Me too. Yeah. So that I fell in love with the rivalry. Bodybuilding was at like all time uh, entertainment value at the guest posings they did together. So I was in it. Yeah. What yeah. about you, Luke? I've already Dorian. Dorian? Yeah. Do you think people choose their favorite bodybuilder based on bodybuilding or based on who they can see themselves being? Probably more of that, I would say. 
Right? That's what I think, too. Like, like Sean Roden, would never, like, as, as cool as Sean is, he'd never be my favorite bodybuilder because... You do, yeah. I have zero. I can't relate to that whatsoever. Yeah. The first bodybuilder I ever saw was Marcus Rule. That fucking freaked me out. I was... <laughs> I was 20 years old and he was walking downtown Toronto to the, to the Toronto pro-am. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Literally. That's the first thing I said. Cause I couldn't believe it. You know, just like six foot one with the blonde crew cut. He was wearing yeah. like a, he was wearing like a lumberjack shirt that was like open and had the sleeves cut off. I'm like, what the, f-? it looked like a flex magazine shoot. Like he literally looked like he came from flex magazine. And, uh, but then I saw Dexter because he competed against Dexter at that show. And then I'm like, that's a, that's a fucking bot. Like, that's a physique. Even Dexter's a lot smaller then, but so yeah. Dexter. And then when I saw Chris Cormier, Chris Cormier was my favorite. Oh, really? Chris, Chris Cormier was because I always saw, you know, one of the things in bodybuilding I feel people get marked down for is being too proportionate. Like, if I've said this before, like, if you look at Steve Kuklo, I feel like one of the reasons he's not talked about more is because Seth uh, Luke's gone. He, he does this sometimes, he just like falls asleep. Oh, no, okay. I'm just I'm just looking at the questions. Um, <laughs> sometimes uh, I think of Luke, and it's like, or not Luke, uh, Steve. Everything is proportionate. Everything is Very. even. So I feel like he doesn't get his just as like he doesn't get the respect he deserves. I, I could agree with that to some degree. I mean, he's placed in what did he take? He took third at the Arnold. Fourth. Fourth, I think fourth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he. he so I mean, he. I mean, yeah, Ramy placed ahead of him. He yeah. he did really well. I mean, fourth at the fucking Arnold. But yeah. you're right. I think that if he had massive arms, I think he might get treated a little bit differently. But I don't even mean just necessarily placing on stage. I mean more about like fanfare. Oh, that too as well. Right? Because sure. I don't feel like the fans notice him as much as they should because he's not he's doesn't not have this, doesn't have this freaky outstanding body part that they can all like latch onto or like. And I always thought Chris Cormier is the same way. He was so genetically perfectly built that nothing really stood out at you. It, so, another example would be Melvin Anthony. Yeah. The dude, this was yeah. as, as symmetrical and next to perfect and that you could, that you could even, there wasn't many people like it, but yeah. then you got Marcus rule. that was uh, and Lee priest and yep. But those are the guys that people remember because they have that yep. one thing that like blew you away or something. Right. Sure. Uh, Luke, do you have a question? Or are you just gonna, are you locked I, off? I was actually more just looking, apparently they're closing all the McDonald's tomorrow. Oh, yeah. What are you going to do? Just have a shit time, I think. <laughs> what about Burger King? Is Burger King staying open? I don't, know. I don't know if there is a Burger King near here. Do you guys have, you guys, is Burger King a big thing in the UK or no? Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 McDonald's and Burger King are the, the two head honchos of the burgers. Yeah. What about KFC? Are you a KFC guy? KFC is dog shit, I think. Although I, I do like it, <laughs> it's also still dog shit. Why do you think it's dog shit? Uh, well, because every time I shit my guts out, every time I eat it, I'm like, I normally go, oh, this is tasty. And then the next day, I'm like, this is not tasty. I like yep. it because I feel like it's real chicken. It, yeah, it's the not. Chicken, the chicken it's real bad. chicken. Well, can it, it can't be not real chicken. It it's comes not, on a bone. The chicken's fine, but whatever the fuck it's covered with is not good. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um, what's your go-to fast food, Seth? Do you have one? Uh, not really. Uh, I'm big five guys guy. Wait, this guy five says guys he, shit. Five, guys five guys is the best, but this guy says Bo Lewis is that guy's name. Look it up. Is that Bo Lewis? Is that who you're talking about? I don't know. I don't remember. All right, let's find out. I wonder if he's on Instagram. Yeah, he's on Instagram. Big Bo Lewis? Yep, might be him. He's a powerlifter, this guy. No, 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 it's yeah. not. That's not him. Go back. It's something else. He's an IFBB pro. Uh, maybe just let's see if we just type it into Google. That might be dangerous. Bo, <laughs> Bo Lewis, bodybuilder, IFBB pro. That's him. <laughs> what the That's fuck? Him. Look at- <laughs> That's amazing. What the fuck is that, <laughs> dude? <laughs> This guy can't be a body, but who's going to pay attention to your physique? Look at this guy. How could, any- <laughs> How could anybody pay attention to your physique? You got a fucking, like a hammer like that. Well, that's what he says. He's like, hey, guys, I'm also a pro body. Look at, look at this one. Look at, look, at, look, look at this. Seriously? What the fuck is that? Bro, that thing is massive. <laughs> Thing's I scary. Do you guys think when girls see this, it's like awesome? Or they're like, fuck that. I they think, probably think that's Godzilla. That's probably what they think. But do you, seriously, do you think that helps him or hurts him? 
I, I don't know. I'm not, I couldn't, I never been, best. never been there. <laughs> I never had that problem. I legitimately might be like an eighth of that. Look at it. What the fuck is this? It just looks like a, like he's put a sock in there. Like, well, one thing that he's jumping out of me here is that he has massive bollocks for a bodybuilder. Like, he's going to be telling me he's natty or something. Like, look at, you know what's, you know, what's really funny about this is he's actually got, like a pretty good physique and no one's yeah. ever gonna, and no one's ever gonna know nope no, one, <laughs> no one's ever gonna know <laughs> <laughs> well seriously no one no one is looking i'm sorry dude like your physique is very symmetrical but nobody's paying attention to your physique like no it's 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 and why are um, you wearing and why are you wearing silver trunks like are you trying to make he, it worse uh, why do you think well, he's making it worse for yeah, himself. Yeah, of course he is. If you've got a gigantic cock, you're going to be like, well... Yeah, but he doesn't have to accentuate it. This is, like, dark. You can still see it. It's not like yeah, it's fucking I hiding. I know, but he, he must be loving it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you would exploit the shit out of that. Look at this. It's got a, he's got, it's got a nice physique. Like, he actually has a nice physique. But you, yeah. not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Oh, how'd you, bro, how'd fucking you, riot. How'd you find that guy, man? I was because on my feed, it's right just now. a ton of it's a ton of bodybuilding shit. Oh, your and explore like, page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On uh, yeah. And I was uh, and then all of a sudden I was during contest season yeah. and like I was looking and then I kept scrolling through on stuff. And then I was like, Jesus, God, what the fuck? <laughs> like, oh, God. Look at all the look at all the fucking babies in the comments. Like, so oh. you're scrolling. So you're scrolling through your explore page. And all you saw was this big cock. And you're like, oh. what the fuck? Yeah, it wasn't his physique that stopped it. Yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, imagine he worked so hard. He, I mean, he got a great physique and he just, he'll never be able to run from it. Mm -mm. No, no, he's stuck with that forever. All right, we'll do one more question and then I'll let you go, Seth, because it's been a while and I, I, I really appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, good time. Good time. What's that? Can I go too? That's why I have to stay. He's just saying, he's just I, don't, saying, I, I don't have to thank you for coming on. You're a part of the show with me. Yeah, like, I'll let you go, Seth. That's cool. You're acting like I've got to stay and do more of this shit with you. We've already done this for fucking two hours. Hey, we're helping people. We're helping people right now because they're at home. They're learning about Bo Lewis. And they're they're going to show their wives. <laughs> well, we're providing, you're be like, no. what I could have if I wasn't providing with you, you short white fuck. <laughs> no, no guy is showing their wife that picture. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna show it to him and i'm gonna look him right in the face and be like i want to see your reaction yeah right i feel like, about this <laughs> <laughs> they're like no honey they're all the same i don't care they're i don't think about that stuff <laughs> yeah bullshit and then you see their eyes just go like this like <laughs> um all right let's see i'm trying to figure out an, an interesting one here okay let's just do this one Okay, what career would you have pursued if you didn't choose bodybuilding, Seth? Oh, man. So I think about this stuff, but uh, uh, if I would have known what I know now and I went back in time and I wouldn't do it, I love what I do. I mean, I, I don't think I, I didn't think my life was going to be this cool before. Yeah. So uh, but if I was going to choose a career path, I'd have probably been like a civil engineer. Like building really? bridges and shit. Yeah. But I do love you, that shit. Are you an academic? Like, can you go through the schooling? Yeah, I was, uh, I was actually in pharmacy school. That's originally what I started with. Really? So I took, yeah, I wanted to be, a, I wanted to be a biochemist and then possibly go to pharmacy school. Cause I like steroids and making them and stuff. And, uh, I was really good at math and did science. you go to, wait a minute. Did you go to pharmacy school for steroids? Yeah. Like, is that why it drove you that way? You're like, I want to learn all those steroids. Yeah. Seriously. I love them. Fuck yeah, no, dead serious. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I took I was a, I took biochemistry, molecular biology, anatomy, physiology one and two, uh, calcu applied calculus. Um, you name it, I was in it. So you're an uh, academic. Yeah, I was I was relatively smart. I did a good job, yeah. and then uh, and then in college, like I just kind of I just kind of started like realizing that I fucking hated everything, and I liked mm -hmm. women, and I started doing drugs, and I was like, I don't like the academic side of it. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of got monotonous to me because I wasn't learning about steroids, the things I thought I was going to. Yeah, like yeah. I wasn't I wasn't able to connect the dots from the information I was gathering mm -hmm. to what I wanted to do. So once that disconnect occurred, I stopped. Yeah. And that's whenever I transitioned into safety sciences and became OSHA, EPA, DOT regulations. And I went and worked for a big construction company and I met civil engineers yeah. that I would work hand in hand with from a safety point. I'm like, you got a cool fucking job. 
Yeah, you just wanted didn't want to go finish the schooling for it. Fuck no. So yeah, I yeah. say yeah, that's still got a four year degree and uh, all that. But if I could go back, uh, civil engineering with civil engineering architecture. Yeah. Yeah. So have you? Um, so you did all the safety courses, like all the rescue from heights and all that, because I've done I've done all the I did all those when I worked yeah, at a security to, firm. Yeah, I used to teach a lot of the classes as well. So like rescue from heights, rescue from confined spaces, like all that stuff. You, you taught that shit. That's pretty awesome. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. And now you're doing this. Uh huh. <laughs> pretty uh, pretty uh, d- different career path for you. What about you, Luke? <laughs> uh, well, I think we've already answered mine before. It's not as interesting. What is what? It, what, it, what I, I'd like to hear. I didn't. Well, but not everybody that's listening has heard all the episodes. So. Um, I'd be a drummer. I'd play drums. But you were stop. a drummer. Why'd you stop then? Because it got it felt too much like a business. Felt I, all the reasons so, I did it. Taken away. So you're a musician. Yeah, well, my background's music and art. That's all my background. Oh is. yeah, you didn't, no you didn't know that, Seth. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, he. Drew, what he... other instruments do you play? Just drums. Are you able to listen to the drums and pretty much pick up on exactly what's occurring? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, easy. So you're so were you are you self taught or did you learn? From no, I had, I had lessons. I did, I did a few grades. Um, I found it really difficult to read music. Um, it was something I just it just didn't. That was the only part of it that didn't come naturally, and it started taking away from my playing and made me feel more restrictive. So uh-huh. I, very, I was very much by ear, and uh, we did a lot of theory at college as well. So with with drums, it was more. It's simple as it sounds. It was just learning how to count, really. So that I drum, don't understand. I'm uh, so, so the so, only so, reason so, I'm, so, I'm curious. So drum, drums, I do, it, it, everything gets broken down into kind of eighth notes, sixteenth notes, thirty second notes within kind of a four bar phrase. So basically, if you can count to four, you can count to eight, you can count to sixteen, and you can count to thirty two. You pretty much and and you can do that and realize what you're doing with each hand that's you the problem pretty, that's pretty much as the the most amount of theory that i needed to know to get to where you wanted to so be. have you ever tried to pat your pat your stomach and rub your head you know that thing where you pat your stomach and you rub your head and rub see your if you stomach can, and pat your head or pat your stomach or other way around yeah is that difficult at all see how, see how easy it is for him <laughs> Uh, that's so the, the reason i'm curious is because like music <laughs> is the one thing that i cannot fucking do yeah. like i you could hand you could break it down for me and i'd still i'd probably still have the same level of 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 ability if you taught me for five days or five years i i've never been good or able to pick up anything with music nothing like i can't even remember songs i don't even remember lyrics uh, like instruments, yeah. I'm I'm terrible with them. With the drums was weird. Like I tried other instruments. I tried, like I actually took up piano lessons at one point. I just did. I just couldn't wrap my head around it. But sitting behind drums, I was like, I can just do this. This is this makes sense to me. Oh shit! Can you yeah. tell me what? Can I tell you why that drove me crazy? So my, I've always wanted to learn how to play drums, and my wife bought me a set like two years ago now, and I played them for a little while. I tried to learn. I tried like hard to learn, and I was like, just shit. Like I, I like not absolutely horrible, but shit. I asked Luke. Did you pick it up right away or did it take some time? He goes, nah, I just could just play. I'm like, fuck. It just, right. I think it's one of those things where some people just have it. You know what I mean? Like, because I've talked to a few people now that play instruments and it seems like most of the ones that are good kind of picked it up pretty easily. Yeah. So. No, um, and I think it takes, I think it takes uh, from what, like just understanding on how people's minds work. Like my mind does not work like that, but my mind works very well with numbers and 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 uh whenever it comes to music there's not one part of me that i can't i it does, i don't work that way my uncle yeah. phenomenal at it but like mm-mm, i don't get it yeah um okay uh this guy over here says that luke is getting cranky so we're gonna have to wrap up the i think we luke... it's, it's gone 10 o'clock at night here and i've been up since four are you cranky though i just want to know i'm really hungry as well yeah <laughs> <laughs> he just found out fucking McDonald's is closing. I know. That's yeah, man. Thing. Yeah, so forgive me for being a bit pissed off that I won't be able to get a filet of fish for a few weeks. Is that what I you mean, order? Is that what you I, order from McDonald's? Yeah, I love chicken nuggets at the moment. I think it's something about the nuggets. They're just. I can't remember the last time I ordered a filet of fish. They're fucking amazing. <laughs> I, you know what, Joe? I think your shit overseas is better than our shit here in the states. I yeah, think it's like, better it's quality. Like a filet of fish. There's something about a filet of fish. It's like. Well, it's, it sounds disgusting. I don't even like fish. But no, fish, reason, fish sticks are different, though. 
for some reason what they do with the bun and the bun's so soft and it's just they're just amazing and I, on paper it's like sushi it should be <laughs> but it's delicious <laughs> Look at his face. See the see the like the deep genuineness in his face. He's talking. Talking about one for a while. This is this is devastating. All right. Oh my god. Let's wrap it up, guys. I, I apologize for keeping you guys so long. Thank you, man, for both coming Fuck on. No, it's good times. I feel like we're just doing fun. a kind of doing a service for people because you know nobody's got anything to do. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll do it again, man. Thanks, Seth. Right, I appreciate gentlemen. it, dude. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you, guys. Can okay, I go guys. through as well? Yeah, we good. Of course you can. <laughs> bye, bye, guys. Uh, later, dudes. See you later, guys. All right.